Hello and welcome <clears throat> to the... <laughs> We've been laughing for the last like 30 minutes. Uh, my voice is already shot. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm supposed to run this for at least three hours. I have no plans. Where's our Claire when we need them? Oh my god. Okay, but yeah, welcome. I'm glad to have you guys back. <clears throat> uh, and, um, yeah, let, let me let me bring the table on the Twitch and the Twitch to the table. And uh, uh, we're back to our most favorite location with towers of dice and lots of drawings and uh, an upcoming wonderful, amazing, exciting recap. Please don't get their hopes up. It's going to be the most amazing thing anyone has ever seen. Oh. <laughs> Alright, anyway, Austin. Um, I haven't slept. <laughs> <laughs> there are things that I know that that you wouldn't understand, you wouldn't comprehend, you wouldn't believe. And these are things that I've had to bear the weight entirely on my own for way too long. And so listen. <laughs> So much was that revealed again? and uncovered in this last session through our conversation with Kiriel and Muriel, and through the truths that we uncovered through the stars of knowledge that they gifted to us. And listen, I, I know that the last time I put on my tinfoil conspiracy cap, I got a little off the rails, but I really think that we need to sit down with our cork board and fit a few pieces together here. And I think if you bear with me, we're on the brink of blowing this campaign wide open. So Winther and I would now like to unveil something. Now presenting the Community Conspiracy Corkboard, aka the CCC. Oh no! <laughs> Let's <And> go! <laughs> as we progress in this campaign, we may want to look back at the board and see how we were right all along, or to make additions or changes when we learn more. So there's been a few revelations, a few discoveries that were mentioned in the last session that have led me to believe that we can draw a few strings between a few previously disconnected threads. So buckle up! Get your snacks. You don't have to prepare a session because this is going to be a long and bumpy ride. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so we were all bestowed gifts of knowledge from Kiriel and Muriel, which included the ability to understand Ladarian Draconic, a language which was not previously understood by any Plurnan. That means we can go back and finish the quest in that one city of the dragon where the dragon was. Vera. So keep that in mind. Vera. Wait, he Someone was, uh, he put was that a on a card. Though. Someone put that on a card. Vera. Okay, I'll lock it for you. <clears throat> we can finish the quest in where? I mean, I need some help here because I gotta talk. We are all... Okay, that wasn't the end of their gift giving. They presented us with a constellation of eight stars emerging from the carved stone platform beneath us. They told us each to pick a star, ask it a question, and it would give us a glimpse into our futures. And the answers that were given changed everything. First up to the plate was Professor Pontifex Vastalus al Enoch, if that is his real name. Mm. But how would he know? He's an orphan. Or is he? <laughs> well, no, he isn't. His parents yeeted him on a doorstep, leaving him with nothing but a name and a small prism, which we now know to be a scale from the Lord of the Skies. That's not the right one. Th that's not it either. Hold on. <laughs> I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Lord of the Skies, put a pin in that. I'll, I'll put a pin in that. Put a pin in it. I'll put a pin in it. There's a connection pin. here. There's a connection here. You see it? Okay. <clears throat> uh huh. And yet, this was somehow left with Pontifex over 350 years before the so called discovery of Ladaria. Now, how could that be? We'll come back to that later. So. Pontifex ponders what he should ask before settling on asking about the condition of our dear friend Talix. 
He touched a star, and Pontifex received a vision of Talix submerged deep below the ocean's surface, seemingly asleep. And Kyriel and Muriel stated that even though there was nothing we could do to save him, we were fated to meet again at a predestined time. In other words, Talix is in hell, and we'll all join him there someday. <laughs> Next up is Pip, who pulled out the stones Magdragach gave him and asked what it all meant. He touched a star and received a vision of him and his companions, trudging through an unknown landscape until they arrived at two massive stone doors that they've never seen before. Kirill and Muriel explained that he wanted to know more about the Stormforged Serpent, which was likely their title for Magdragach. Mag Magdragach. We'll put him right here. Put a pin in that sucker. <clears throat> None are as cunning as he is, and if Pip wishes to unfold the mystery, he already holds the keys. They told him to seek out Nunith, the Undying King of the Nahadra. Pin those suckers. Okay. So let's unpack this, shall we? First off, there is a apparently a connection between the Nahadra and Magdragach. That goes through way more pins than I wanted it to. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> These are connected anyway. Um, so... In order to know more about Magdrakach, we first have to go to Nunith of the Nahadra. So, they're all connected there. But why would that be? Well, we know that the Nahadra were mining deep on the surface of Ladaria. See? It's right there. Uh, and this was seen to be taboo by other Ladarians. But it made the Nahadra stronger. So they won. They didn't care about the peninsula because it didn't have the stones and metals that they wanted. Could it be that the deeper they went, the closer they got to the watery depths, the more they seemingly encroached on fiendish territory? Perhaps the Nahadra dug too deep and found things that they were never meant to find and then locked it off behind a forbidden dam. Who knows? But you know what that reminds me of? Gnomes. Someone put gnomes on here. <laughs> Because the wolf also contacted us through Gringina about uh, the gnomes mining in Ladaria and how it was very bad for Ladaria. And so that seems very familiar. The Nahadra were mining and that was bad. The gnomes were mining and that was bad. Connected. Okay, next. Brooke is the two-headed one. Brooke asked, Will I ever be okay again? And he touched a star, received a vision of him walking down different paths, and all of these paths converge, and he sees himself, and he almost doesn't recognize himself, not because he looks much different, but because he sees that his spirit has been healed. And Kyriel and Muriel say, Only the truth will ever bring you peace. There are few who know it, but none who can speak it. It will take powerful magic to undo the seal upon your tongue and the tongues of those who keep secrets from you. You have many paths to choose from. Seek the hidden couple in the eternal snowstorm. Awaken the one who sleeps under the watchful eye of his friend and rival. Befriend the one who tames the wild with thunder or let the power of a newly born god wash away your curse. All right, so one step at a time. Who are all these people? Let's do the easy ones first. Awaken the one who sleeps under the watchful eye of his friend and rival. Well, Brooke and Sunny. Oh, why do I say that? Why do I say that? It's because your girl's soul is living inside your body, bucko. <laughs> what? <laughs> remember, remember when you were having a dream? And Sunny the panther was your spirit animal? It's because her soul's inside of you. I don't know how that happened. You probably don't either, but we're going to find out sometime. Anyway, this one's talking <laughs> about Jamuel. Because <laughs> Jamuel's sleeping under the eye of Orm Tinhart. Uh, sorry, spoilers, Jory. We'll explain it all later. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, next. Befriend the one who tames the wild with thunder. <laughs> we spent half an hour before the session trying to figure out who this was, and I can now proudly say it's Algamimpus, who's a gnome. So I'll put him with the gnomes. <laughs> so Brooke is connected there because they can take care of his tongue curse. There's that far more reach. yarn here than I was expecting there that to be. Didn't reach. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, next up, let the power of a newly born god wash away your curse. Who is the one who refers to himself as a god? Anyone? Anyone? Bonifer. What? <laughs> 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 Think about uh, someone who seems a little seems a little seedy. Uh, That's right. It's the Drow Man. Alex? Oh. Let's put him on here. <laughs> is this the a seed joke? Man. Okay. It's a little CD. I was trying. Because if we release that seed in the ground, then Drow Man might come back. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. We we got we gotta hurry this along. <laughs> I'm, I'm nowhere close to done. <laughs> Drow Man. Great. And then seek the hidden couple in the eternal snowstorm. Well, who could that be? I've got a pretty strong idea. Remember when we saw visions of Pontifex's parents back in the past and they looked, you know, totally fresh and fine. And then fast forward to Talix's vision and we saw them again talking to Jamuel and Orm, which is why they're connected here. And they looked just as fresh as if they had just popped out of a fresh can of, of sardines. Well, <laughs> they must have done something. Some sort of weird, timey-wimey shenanigans that have kept them fresh, fresh. in their living. They're, they're, they're powerful wizards. So we need to seek the hidden couple. They're hidden in Ladaria in an eternal snowstorm. So, Brooke, these are also an option. And we could find these are them also sometime. your parents. <laughs> <laughs> they might be. We haven't met them. <laughs> While we're talking about They're Drow, I want you to remember parents. something. Put the wolf on here. <laughs> Granny is just Pontifex's daughter. Where are my notes? Uh, whatever time. It's lagging. Okay. Sorry. What do you no need? Put the wolf on here. <laughs> no Who do you need? Put the wolf. The wolf. <laughs> Wait. Wolf. The wolf. wolf. The wolf, wolf is connected to the gnomes because Greninja is is a person. <laughs> All right. Gr yeah, I said it right. The wolf is EP. <laughs> now, do you remember what Gringina said about the wolf? In her dreams, he appears as what? A drow. Yes. Yeah. They're connected. <laughs> yeah. Wolf is connected to Drow Man. <laughs> yeah, that is. Now I want to ask you another important question. If this Drow, this one, the wolf, is claiming to be a god, what if the other? What if other Drow are claiming to be gods? So let me ask you this question: <laughs> Have you ever seen a Drow and a god in the same place? <laughs> <laughs> no. They're all you dry. know, you really have me. They're all dry. <laughs> all the way down. That line. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're all dry. All dry. <laughs> Next up's Tekka. Where are you? Here you are. <laughs> oh, down in the clean area of the board. That we won't last long. <laughs> Nothing weird going on with Tekka. Tekka asks how to find. The Reira, the people of dreams flying on wings of light. And they and uh, the vision came to him, uh, standing on a shoreline, sand beneath his feet, can see the sea directly in front of him, and he has a sense of purpose. And before him is a creature that he's never seen before. Although he knows his kind, he's interacting with a fiend. And Kyriel and Muriel spoke, saying that to find what you're looking for, you will have to cross the sea. You need the help of a devil to do so safely. A new door opens for you as we speak. Find it, walk through it, ring the bell, your fate will become clear. First of all, new door, 
who has doors, Jamiel. That's an easy one. We all knew that. Next is <laughs> demons, devils. Nobody else has doors. One. <laughs> no one else has doors. Literally the only building only with a door thus far. We only associate one person with doors. Uh, you it need is connections. doors plural. You need connections to find a devil to get across the ocean. Squeak's going to help with that. And of course, we already... We already decided last time that Tekka is Quikash Direct Senior, and we're going wait. with that. <laughs> wait. Hold on. Wait, that's, wait, that's wait, 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 wait. We can't brush Am over I glossing over anything? No, what? wait. My my stream messed up. <laughs> no! I'm not going back. It says it's it's too bad revelation. It says I'm disconnected, handle it. but like, my Discord is clearly fine, so what's going on? How deep does this conspiracy go? They're trying to hide the truth. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh crap, we can't let them go back and reference this in a VOD. <laughs> okay, give me a second. What, what's happening? I'm not live. Oh no. Why though? Oh? We're back! Uh, Alright, continue. We're back. Okay. <laughs> uh, tech, tech, tech is Squeak Senior. Okay. Now that we've acknowledged that. What? What? Virian. <laughs> He's Virian a demon. Says, He's not a devil. Through everything, I just want to know why in so many times and so many places I've survived when others haven't. She touches a star. And she looks into its light. Sees her place in a place that's opposite of the sea. Dry, no vegetation, just exposed rock, harsh sunlight. Feeling warm. Uh, and you're about to lay eyes on a figure that's quite tall, but then the vision fades. And Kirill and Muriel say to Virian, Is your spirit too troubled to look to leave your past behind at the bottom of the sea? Get over it. Instead of looking to the future, you're looking to the past. Uh, your life has yet to touch the lives of others who need you, even though you're so old. Uh, if guidance is what you seek, then there's one who can offer it. Seek in the dry valleys and the scorched canyons of the land, the one the Yavelsi call the collector. He has your answer. I got nothing that seems pretty, pretty cut and dry. Uh, <laughs> I mean, a card squeak. for the collector. Asks if his parents are getting back together. They say no. <laughs> but there is a connection between Squeak Jr. and his dad. So let's go ahead and put that there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the... It's a Mrs. Uh, Doubtfire um, uh, ending. Yeah. How did we establish that Tekka is Squeak Singer before we established that Squeak Singer is Squeak's dad? <laughs> it's a it's a complicated process. You just we can't have explain to trust it right now. This. Yeah, yeah. This is the definition of complicated. Also, we learned. It's a conspiracy board. We Matt. learned. Uh, we learned Orm the Unan's uh, title, which is Awakened One. We still don't know Talix's. They <laughs> never said it yet. The drowning oh. one? The <laughs> <laughs> if the lady had said that back then, we'd be like, what? What? <laughs> don't worry. You'll get it in 50 sessions or so. <gasps> um, uh, so, so Orm let us use his... his uh, constellation to use to gain knowledge this for ourselves. And yes, this one. This one. Not this one. No, not this one. This one. This orm. The dog orm in the book orm. Uh, let dorm. us ask our question. The dorm. Is planting the seed of Vakanoth what is best for Ladaria? And oh boy, the answer they gave us. This was huge. Ladaria is hurting. The reason why our world is bleeding is beyond our sight and the sight of the stars. It is weaved in the very fabric of the universe, in everything it is made of. Mm. Does that sound like familiar wording? I'm, no! Is this where we play my theme song? <laughs> <laughs> Insert Pontifex theme song. But, Prism, what the universe is made of, right there. It's a very tiny All of part. that. You can just draw <laughs> it, to, and like every face is a different color. 
Yeah. 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 And so these are connected. Pontifex is connected to the prism. His parents are connected to the prism, and the Lord of the Skies is connected to the prism. Looks great. Uh -huh. Um. And apparently, the prism. And what the universe is made of is far more connected to all of this than we thought. Because the prism has something to do with the seed. The seed. That right here. Let's put it on top of these two. Or you can put on it on top of the string? Yeah. No! It needs a place <laughs> to rest. The seed is also EP. <laughs> Where's the seed? Who has it? Alright. Uh, uh, Pontifex, give it to me. I'm gonna trace it. <laughs> You're going to draw a tiered shape. Yeah. In blue. <laughs> <laughs> seed. Okay, so the seed, of course, has a lot to do with the Plurinan gods. And with Plurna. But also, the seed was given to us because of the fox, which was given to Talix because of Gul Bargak. Bur Burgak. Fox! <laughs> fox is a god, and also a drow, as we've discussed. Fox is connected to Talix. And the seed. I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> and the seed is connected to Talix. I mean, panthers Talix have teeth seed. that are similar to foxes, so there might be a sunny connection. Back in the vision <clears throat> that Talix received in the dream place. What's going on? Okay. Jamuel, Pontifex's parents, and Aaron Moore were all talking about how... Ladaria would only be stabilized if they planted the seed. That was their only option because Aaron Moore and Jamuel visited Pontifex's parents. So these are all connected to the seed. Okay. You following me? <laughs> sure. Super clear. Super I'm, clear. I'm getting somewhere. <laughs> where am I? I have a question. Yes. I'm getting somewhere. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? That, that nothing. Continue. Okay. That is. It. They continued. Never before have the stars hesitated to provide an answer, but we do see your fate. There is a hole in the center <clears throat> of the land. It reaches deep, deep within the ground. You'll need the guidance of the sleeping one to navigate its depths. Sleeping was jamming. Sleepy boy. <laughs> the seed of yours will stabilize the land, but planting it will not be without unimaginable consequences. Why? Drow man is in the seed. Because every oh, okay. time someone goes unconscious, when we're around, they see the drow man. Because drow, man drow man's in the seed, because drow man has always seen the tree. The tree of Vakanoth has always been a part of his world. It was the only thing in there when he first uh, uh, awoke. Are you trying to tell us that the, the Vakanoth is also a drow? We're getting there. And that they reproduce <laughs> with speed. We're, we're getting oh. somewhere. Oh. Okay, just, just hold on. All right. Now, I want you to really think about this here. Hey. There is a hole in the center of the land. Why? Why is there a hole in the center of the land? Why is Ladaria not stable, whereas Plurna is stable? Ladaria must have had an anchor at some point, something that keeps the planes from shifting apart. And I want you to remember this. Earthquakes only started happening when the Plurnan showed up. Earthquakes. Let's put that here. 
next to Tekka. All right. Now remember something else. There was a time where Plurna was at war. And they killed Vakanath. The, 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 the other side killed Vakanath. Vakanath was dead for a while. The clerics couldn't do anything. Vakanath was dead, Dunzo. And then, somehow, miraculously, some cleric showed up and was like, I'm gonna bring him back. And then he died. And then, then Vakanath came back. But it couldn't have been that simple, right? We already have established that Ladaria must have been explored long before originally thought, because Pontifex's parents gave the prism to Professor Pontifex 350 years before Ladaria was discovered. And so they already knew Ladaria was a thing. So, Ladaria, once upon a time, had its own tree, its own Vakanath. And the Plurnans, when Vakanath died, stole the tree from Ladaria, leaving a big hole behind. And this is mm. tree theory. <laughs> We're calling this tree theory. Uh -huh. Okay, they, oh. they stole the Ladarian tree and replaced Vakanath with the new one. And this would explain why there's a massive hole in the ground. They replaced the Plurnan tree with a fresh new one from a different world, and ever since then, Ladaria has become unstable. And that's why Jamuel wanted the seed to be planted. Because he was already a part of the plot of transporting the one that used to be on Ladaria. And so in order to get the seed to the new world, they had to finally reveal that they had discovered a new world. Hence, Jamuel discovering, in quotations, Ladaria. I would like to uh, add a string in here that connects the professor to the hole. You got it. <laughs> yeah, this oh. is uh, this is actually in his backstory. I think he's talked about it sometime in like session three, and then we never talked about it again. Uh, the entire reason the professor is who he is and is doing what he is doing and knows the magic that he does is because of a whack job of, uh, conspiracy theory he has about Emil Zistar, who is the cleric who brought back Vakanov. Nice. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. I'm almost done. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, half an hour later. Oh, God. It's been so long. <laughs> uh, Krauko. Yada yada yada. Oh yeah, the dragons were like, we've got one more, we've got one more thing we need you to do. And then we're like, hey Squeak, hey Tekka, do you forgive the Kroko? Do you want to be friends with them? And we were like, okay, we forgive them. And we will, we will make friends with them. And then they roared really loud. Their roars reached even the shores of Plurna. They were so loud and somehow it didn't break our eardrums. <laughs> and, uh, and then the water dissipated from their previous home and then we asked them some more questions but you can watch the VOD for that I'm done <laughs> <laughs> all of this was great and I was really wondering where we're going and then the whole idea of the tree being transplanted between the worlds and that's the whole that's where you got me I've, yeah. I've drank the Kool-Aid yeah <laughs> sold Get my tinfoil I don't know why these on. blank cards are here. Uh. Okay. Anything to add? <laughs> I'm sold. Great. Yeah. Yep. Good, good game, guys. I don't know if I believe anything else up here. <laughs> but the tree <laughs> hole is good. And the Sunny Brook soul thing is good. Uh, also, why is there earthquakes, but it's not connected to anything? Do we just like to mention them? Oh, sorry. That goes to the hole. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> it goes in the Is the hole. seed connected to the hole? 
Everything is connected to the hole. The hole is the key to everything. Save the hole, save the world, huh? <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. I'm done. This is all Pip canonically <laughs> expounding on this to the group, right? Kill me. Just kill me now. <laughs> Somebody kill Pip so he can come back with a very intelligent character that can explain all of this to us. Uh, I've, we need I've the, the deus ex machina in the form of Austin re-rolling a new character. I've completed my, my duty. Pip is suddenly petrified again, uh, uh, and a new person shows up <laughs> and then leaves after dumping info info on us. That was about twenty that was about twenty-five minutes of summary. Oh, I'm so I'm sorry. sorry. No, Beautiful. that was amazing. Oh, that took you twenty-five minutes to summarize every note for the entire campaign. Oh wait. Very and also add in new wrinkles guess. that didn't exist and that probably still don't, but it's fun to think about. I like, oh, a, yeah. I like a footnote. And you still have two thumbtacks left. <laughs> so there's precisely we'll, two pieces of this puzzle left. We'll come back to this at some point, I'm sure. God, it was so legible <laughs> at one point. <laughs> the, um, the yarn. We've used a lot of it. If we'll you're looking at it from directly above, time. though... No. Yeah, it's yeah, still knives in Okay, <laughs> um, so this was Austin's um, explanations of everything. Um, now we discuss. Well, you just tell us. Is he right? Oh. <laughs> Free theory, yeah, it's your baby. turn. <laughs> is this going to be on the test? <laughs> All of it. Oh, God. I didn't study. Right. Uh, next session, I need Jory to make not just a recap of today, but also a recap of the recap. Okay, I'll recap the recap. Mm. <laughs> From her point of view, where she has missed most of this. I'm just happy to be here. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, but yes, as a... As a oh, my... did the same thing I did. <laughs> same. <laughs> as my gift to you all, the board is like officially a thing. Uh, and we can return to it whenever, whenever we need to. I Excellent. hope. Yes. 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 I'm so <laughs> sad if it got erased. It's okay. Nice. I have it saved, so we can remake it from scratch. Here, <laughs> we have screenshotted here. it. Ah. What is that? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll take him. Yoink. Okay, Austin, uh, I would give you an inspiration uh, for that incredible recap, but you already have two. <laughs> True. True. Oh, uh, disconnected. Nice. Classy. That's like the most mic drop moment that we've had. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome being kicked from the campaign. But, um, <laughs> Went through you like, may, too much. You may give away one of your inspirations and I'll give you the consp conspiration. conspiration. Oh my god! <laughs> I call it something else. <laughs> what conspiration? Just, just gift one away. Catapult your catapult spiration mm. to someone. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and this is why we were laughing in a half hour leading to the actual session. I was listening to Austin prepare his summary, setting up the cards, and trying to figure things out. There was one in particular. I forgot what. Oh no. That all the gods are drow. <laughs> <laughs> or that Tekka is uh, Squeak's dad. Uh, and I don't. There was no evidence supporting that or otherwise. It was just stated as fact and then moved on. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think he just accessed my backstory document. That's probably just what, what happened. Squeak? I see. Squeak is 73 years old. Explain how. How old is Tekka? I, I don't think I was asked his age. Also, so. we just yeah. established weird timey-wimey bullshit has happened because Pontifex is older than his parents. Is he timey-wimey bullshit? I don't... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Well, that was a ride. This is what happens when a D&D campaign goes on for a long time. <laughs> I loved it. I, I hope you were able to follow with, with all that. <sighs> okay. We're just gonna take our time to take a deep breath and assimilate all the knowledge and process it. <laughs> while waiting for Austin to return. All drow are gods. I Other way around. Oh, okay. Uh, all gods are drow. Even. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, all of them. Got it. And you guys and think also that drow because... are also trees and are birthed from seeds. Have you ever seen drow reproduce? <laughs> <laughs> I guess not, no. Can, can Virium provide any insight? The closest thing we have to a drow? You're not a drow. She doesn't. No, I said the closest thing. Her we opinion have. doesn't matter. Just need an elf. <laughs> I'm here. Hey, welcome back. Let's play some Dungeons <clears throat> and Dragons. Do we have Dennis? I was afraid of that. No. Well, fun session. Great time. <laughs> My so... opinion is very important. Thank you very much. <laughs> so do all drow have the potential to become a god or is it only the drow born from seeds uh, maybe they're like the original drow and then they got tired or they just got neglectful of watering the drow plants and now we have like the normal drow that don't really do much but like hide well, from the sun well think you, about this you guys do remember the, the drow the are like extinct right Supposedly. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah, also, <laughs> supposedly, the Lord of the Skies scales don't come off, uh, and yet. Listen, the <laughs> Lord of yet. the Skies could become a person. He looked like a like a gray Yavelsi. What if the Plurning Gods could do the same thing and look like Drow? What if all Ladarians are just weird-looking Drow? They're all drow all the way down. <laughs> They're all Pikmin. Uh, do we have Dennis back? I am back. Welcome back. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, I, I guess I have to run a session, huh? Yeah, time for some serious D&D. Serious D&D time. Serious. serious D &D. Uh... I could, in all honesty, listen to more of these campaign theories for the rest of the evening. Okay. Music. <laughs> Music. <laughs> Wait, am I missing a track? I don't know, I got it. <sighs> okay, so. Oop. When each of you next open your eyes, uh, you are welcomed by a familiar sight. Which hopefully isn't broken. Okay, <laughs> I haven't actually tried this in a while. It's been months! Wait, <clears throat> why are we here? Where are we left from? Um, you don't remember? This no. like the moon. 
Oh! <laughs> this is how we got to the moon. Yeah, we prayed to the moon. Um, you are still uh, all standing on the on the circle in the depths of the uh, building uh, constructed un constructed under the remains of Stealing Dread, and you're still surrounded by the people who were there before. Um, <clears throat> oh, goodness. Uh, Devamia and uh, Freda being not too far off watching what's going on. Um, there is a... <laughs> I completely lost my place in the notes. Uh, there's Tarsha nearby just kind of watching and uh, twisting his fingers. And there is uh, uh, Kalvik uh, chanting just like he was before. Um, and you're struck by a few um, uh, thoughts. The first one being just the way you feel. You feel awake, healthy, strong. Um, more than... Um, you, feel, you feel better than you ever have before. Um, and also, you're, you're hearing something weird um, as Kalvik standing not too far from you uh, about in this spot um, facing away from you uh, and up towards his platform he is chanting and <clears throat> he says wind between stars please hear our plea guide us with wisdom set our hearts free in twilight's embrace under moonlight uh, under moonlit night grant us your visions fill us with insight Night between stars, I call upon your grace. Lead us through shadows, through troubles we face. With dawn's arrival, we find, we find solace and might. Grant us your knowledge, truth found in light. And he's repeating this over and over. And it actually takes a few seconds to realize you are understanding him. You may add to your Carter sheets that you now speak Krell, the language of the Krellco. Mm. Damn. As uh, um, Kalvik is chanting over and over, there, there's a moment where uh, Tarsha kind of timidly he raises a finger, um, calls out to him, and says, "Ah, oh, they're uh, they're awake." The priest. Immediately turns back, looks at all of you. There's a just a brief pause, and then he addresses Tarsha and he says, "Tell them if they've seen anything." Tarsha nods, and in as in fair, <clears throat> he asks Pekka, uh, "So, um, did you did you see something? Did you hear any voices?" We met the twins. You are forgiven. Your home will be returned. What language do you do you reply in? Uh, this is Ethan there, because Okay. Yeah. Um Tarsha's eyes just widen and uh, he relays this to Kalvik in in uh, Krell, which you all understand, and Tarsha seems to be doing his absolute best to um, replicate exactly uh, what Tekka is saying in their language. Um, the two of them are exchanging a bit of like a, a shocked look. Um, Kavik just re repeats, uh, for "Forgiven," and Tarsha nods. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's what he said. There's another long pause where they just look at you like they... Almost like they don't quite recognize you. Was there something else you expected?
Um, Tarsha just nervously holds up uh, his hands, uh, says, No, I mean, no, I, I just, we uh, weren't sure if, uh, if this was going to work at all. Ah, uh, I mean, we, we've ne <laughs> never tried it with, with outsiders. Uh, but uh, but uh, I had I, I I had faith. So you have have any of you been there before? Spoken with the twins. Um. Well, most of us know. Some of us hear their their voices, and then even fewer have ever been graced with, with any vision. It's quite the honor. I don't have an answer for you. But I doubt how much longer the support of the twins will be with you. They seem tired um Tarsha translates this uh, uh, in in crow <clears throat> to Kalvik uh, who nods solemnly like he already knew are the rest of you doing or saying anything I think Pontifex uh, is pretty pointedly keeping it a secret that he can understand what they're saying in hopes that they slip up. Yeah. Ditto. Ditto. Yeah, I figured that was kind of the consensus. <laughs> Squeak is uh, curling up from under Pip's scarf and stands there in imp form and allows himself to be visibly seen by the uh, Krelko in the room. And uh, he In what form did you say? In imp form. Okay. And he just stands up on his, his back legs and, and uh, puts a hand on his chest and just says, Hey, uh, listen. It seems like uh, we got off a bit on the wrong foot. And your deities up there, well, they wanted us to make peace. They wanted us devils and uh, you dragon people to... um." not not be at conflict anymore and because of that peace because of our promise of peace the waters of your land your home they've gone away so uh maybe we should just keep it that way and things will be fine what language is quick speaking common okay <clears throat> um, that means it's up to either uh, Tekka or Devamia to translate in Ezenfair. Uh, that I mean, does... yeah, Tekka take, take can for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, with uh, with uh, Squeak's appearance, uh, there is this like immediate tension. Um, that that develops, but um, Kalvik no longer has his holy symbol. I believe that's currently in Pontifex's uh, uh, possession, um, and uh, nobody really makes any like immediate hostile move. And uh, they they listen. They listen to the chain of translations that has to take place for for Kalvik to, to hear this uh, from Plurinan to Ezenfair and from Ezenfair to Krell. Is it like Google translating several languages and then coming back to... Is it just gibberish? <laughs> the tensest Wait. game of telephone. I have, I have Kelvig's... What? His focus? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Did I do this? Was I here for this? Did you miss a session, perhaps? The session where yeah, the party found the Yeah, I missed the session the when Tekka? we came back, like That's when you guys right. dealt with Cloud Fallen and then mm -hmm. came back. Dude, okay. I was gone for that session. Yes, I... I, th I think we like told you, but 
um, afterwards, uh, where like Kalvik as a as a sign that he wasn't going to harm you, uh, he offered up his uh, holy symbol, and I think he ended uh, up in, in Pontifex's hands eventually. Is this like a recognizable holy symbol of anything? Um, I should it's... probably get this note. <laughs> um, well, I don't think that uh, you'd have seen this particular symbol before. I'm trying to remember if there would have been any circumstances. Uh, oh, so a long time ago, you guys were in Vera, <laughs> uh, the one colony that has one Plurnan dragon in it. Uh, and uh, I think that was the colony where there was uh, uh, a temple that was open to all gods, which included also the, uh, the Ladarian ones. Um, so in that occasion, you might have seen the symbol of Kirill and Muriel. Uh, regardless, uh, it is uh, see, so it's um, uh, it's a thing on a, on, a, on a chain. Like he had it, he was wearing it around his neck, uh, and it's a symbol of two drops, like just a droplet. Mm, okay, so it's symbol of Kirill and Muriel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, put that away. So yeah, they they're listening. They're listening to Squeak speak and to the little chain of translations that brings Squeak's words uh, to Kalvik. Um, as he translates, the Tarsha seems to get kind of a little bit uh, uh, kind of excited, kind kind of enthusiastic um, as uh, you're all claiming that the waters are gone. Um, I need my dice. <sighs> Oop. Okay. Uh, and through the next chain of translations, <laughs> um, Alvik will say, Many things will need to change in our home. There have been conversations. Some of us will have to admit to harsh mistakes. I plan on stepping down from my position, and so does one of our two remaining mothers. Narashk will change. We all pray that this change will be a positive one. We offer to set aside our differences. You are welcome to our home. Anytime you desire. You, he is looking as quick. And the rest of you. Now glancing at the entirety of the party. His, uh, um, his gaze pauses on, on Tekka for a few seconds. He seems to want to add something. Um, and that's it's clear enough for everyone to see. But he doesn't. He now glances past the rest of you, where the stairs lead up and out of this place. Um, and he... He very simply states, we are done here. He takes a step forward, ends up like basically getting right next to Tarsha. He puts a hand on one of his shoulders and he says, you did well. And he's going to walk past you. Harsha seems a little bit less nervous now. Uh, 
Uh, Tekka will look to Tarsho uh, and say Nessafir. This has been difficult for all of you. And rebuilding your homes will be difficult all over again. Do not give up. Uh, not planning to. It will be a lot of work, even if the water is gone, the, the, the damage, it's... Oh, my plants. My flowers. Okay, don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. And we build. Going to be fine. We have to go. Uh, we, we have to start uh, working on heading back. Uh, we can't really stay out here for too long. We don't really digest the food that's out here. I don't know how you guys do it. Am I blabbering? Uh, I should take you outside. New seed will grow again. Even without the twins. And with that, yeah, Tekka will start climbing the stairs. Are you all heading out? Yeah. Yeah. No, no reason mm -hmm. to stick around. Mm hmm. I'll just clear this and uh, welcome back uh, beneath the still in dread. By the time you uh, climb all the way up the stairs uh, and then beneath the remains of the giant dragon, you find that uh, um, based on the um, ooh, how do I put this? It's it feels like you haven't been gone been gone for as long as you actually have. Uh, just based on how little the situation has changed out here, uh, how little progress has been made on the various constructions and whatnot, uh, um, you can't really see the sun um, in this area of dustfall because of just how grey uh, the air is in every direction. Um, and um, there's just... it still feels like it's daytime, but that's pretty much the extent of it. Um, our show asks if you guys are hungry, if there's anything you can provide for your group. It nods. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Say I have food. <laughs> Is it easy to digest? Uh, when when the translation reaches him, Tarsha kind of uh, uh, chuckles uh, and and ends up replying, I I "It's your food. We have a lot of it. Not much that we can eat." Fair enough. Um, right over there. You, you can wait right there. There's some space you can sit down. I'll just I'll bring something. Uh, as he wanders off, uh, uh, Devamia gets like really close to your group. She's gesturing for everybody to sort of like huddle together, and uh, she says, "So, what happened? The whole thing. I, I want to hear the whole thing." And she takes out a notebook. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Tell why, her. but I feel like Pip should tell the entirety of this story. <laughs> Let me tell you everything. Every <laughs> single not, detail. Not everything, not everything, just... I mean, you guys closed your eyes, and then you opened them again, and uh, now you're saying that you you, you saw the little iron gods, and things are fixed? I, I've, I've got to hear how, how more about it. How long were we out? Uh, how long? Yeah. A minute or so? Oh. oh. <laughs> it is like time dilation, but it certainly felt much longer and hurt much more than a minute or two. It it hurt. 
There, oh, there were a lot of things up, up there that were trying to kill us. Okay, or tell me more. At least what it... So, have you had a um, <laughs> jelly? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna check my. Uh, I'm gonna check his little bag. Do I have lightning in a bottle? I have fire in a bottle. You all have a small star in your possession. But do we have gelatin in a bottle? Oh no. I oh. hurt my hand for that fire <laughs> jelly. <laughs> that choo choo jelly. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no. Oh, our jellies are gone. I said you didn't your really burn your hand then. I'd even named my jelly. You <laughs> named your jelly? Wait. Yeah. Is it was important bottle? to me. Still there. I need to find a name for the Tressum eventually, whenever <laughs> she becomes important to me. <laughs> did it did it use my bottle? Is this a bottle removing glitch? <laughs> Inventory bug. Inventory <laughs> bug? Hmm. Did Pontifex oh, I don't know, because Matt wasn't even there. Did Pontifex had uh, his Tressim when you guys where instilled in dread like right before reaching uh, the moons or did he summon her once he was up there uh i don't think he would have summoned the tressum there because i can't think of any reason he would uh he was pretty like looking around and marveling at stars and stuff i don't think he like called the tressum okay 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 because she was there, like she was just there with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah she was there from the get go. Because she was also chasing Squeak in a Squeak in a cage. Um, okay, so um, while you guys are waiting for for lunch, um, Pontifex, you would eventually spot that uh, your Tressim is lounging around uh, out here. It's kind of like on a tree, tail really? dangling We've down. Been gone for like a minute, you lazy shit, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he'll, like, call it down telepathically. Yeah, well, she takes her time. You see her, her ears twitching, and after a few seconds, she begins to rise and stretches and goes to scratch at the bark of the tree. Scratch and scratch, and she licks her paws. I understand the importance of rituals. <laughs> and then eventually glides down. That's all. He just didn't like her being comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Um, how much do you guys share with Devamia and uh, uh there hello? There are probably Freda. several things we should leave out. Yeah. I'm definitely not mentioning that we can suddenly speak the language, but I'm assuming there is a hint of recognition that when Pontifex realized he could understand what they're saying, glancing at the others, and they're also very... <laughs> yeah. so. Every once in a while, there's people that walk by you and you can hear them commenting on your presence. Pointedly avoiding eye contact. Nothing if our ball would insult. <laughs> Yeah, is anyone gossiping over us? Bad most, us? most of them are pointing out your appearance, the clothes you're wearing, um, the the colors of your skin, uh, um, just how unusual and different you are from them. You're a complete uh, lack of any box. Um, children are asking kind of uh, um, embarrassing questions uh, uh, or possibly offensive ones, and the, the, the parents are correcting them. Telling them not to make such comments, most of them. Some are still um, just going really like wide around you. Um, I I'd say like about half of them seem still scared, or um, they they still see you as uh, like um, responsible for everything that happened, uh, and they're actively avoiding you. Uh, there's a few that that show like just genuine curiosity, um, and uh, 
there's going to be a kid that approaches you guys. Um, you've been, you've seen this kid before. Um, he, he also approached you back uh, in the actual Narashk, um, and he was pointing at people and uh, saying things like you, you couldn't understand. Um, he has a book in his hands right now. Uh, and, and like when, when he approaches, he's pressing it uh, against his chest uh, and he's looking at you guys wide-eyed and then he approaches Pontifex specifically and uh, he, he basically pokes him with the side of the book on one arm. Can I help you? What language do you say that in? Uh, learning. Okay. <laughs> Um, he looks, he's just looking up at you. Hey. Shoo. He opens the book and oh. he's trying to show it to you. Say no more. Bonifex <laughs> 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 will, will quickly shift around to the side of this person, buddy-buddy style, uh, and engross himself in whatever <laughs> nonsensical garbage this person is trying to show him. <laughs> um, I uh, love nonsensical garbage. Th this garbage is a spell book. It's written in Krell, but now you can read it. Uh, and it's, it's very, very, very basic magic. Um, and it's in a form that you've never seen before. Um, as you know, every wizard has their own way of writing magic. <clears throat> which is why whenever you have someone else's spell book, you have to, like, decode it, essentially, and then copy the spells in your own book, in your own way. Um, if you have a book. You don't even have a book in your case, but, um... <clears throat> well, that, I do. That's the kind it's of just process. not my book. I have right. another person's book. <laughs> yeah. I have, um, uh, oh, I have... But you I have, have the, the, the dust swept grimoire. Yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. Like you, you, you're not using a spell book for your spells. You're using the the astral, yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. Like regardless, there is a process of decoding and then retranslating into a, a system that you have. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is even more different than that. <clears throat> the magic itself is structured in a very different way to the point where you're not even sure if this magic could actually work, and maybe this child has just gotten it completely wrong. Uh, but it's it's fascinating, and uh, what you what you thought was going to be just nonsense, you actually sit down and you realize you're holding right now in your hands a completely different system of magic. Uh huh. Uh, he's gonna try to uh, pantomime while speaking, still learning common. Uh, this for me, and he's pointing at the book and then pointing at himself. Um, the kid points at a specific part of a specific spell. Okay. And then he, um, he extends an arm in front of him, away from the two of you, and you see him, like, wiggling his fingers. And nothing really happens, and he looks back at you. <laughs> Is there... If Can I understand kind of what this magic should be? Like what it's trying to do? Is he trying to shoot fire out of his hand or something? <laughs> uh, on the fly? It uh, depends on how long you're willing to just stay here and actually read the book. Yeah. Uh, like, rather than trying to understand the spell, he's just trying to, like... I guess he's trying to associate this with like a known school of magic, maybe? Just like a, a quick glance, can he have <clears> any <throat> idea or a guess of what this spell is trying to do? Uh, give me your favorite arcana check. My favorite? Okay, that's my favorite. Your favorite skill check. It's not my favorite. Investigation's my favorite. Investigation's or dragon favorite. chest. <laughs> Those are the two that I'm sick nasty at. Ooh. Okay. It went 27. <laughs> There's 
nothing about this magic you're trying to decode that matches the schools of magic that you're familiar with. Uh, and you figure it out with almost a complete certainty. He's going to lean, like, really close to this person, and then he's going to speak in What is this supposed to do? In, in crowd? Yeah. Um, On effects is going to throw caution to the wind when it comes mm -hmm. to maybe learning new magic. <laughs> uh, the, the child also leans towards you, um, just completely fine with this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And he says, it, it makes a weapon. Can you not do it? No, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Supposed to make a knife. Okay, uh, watch this. Uh, <laughs> the fussy is gonna step, and he's gonna he's gonna hold the kid's book in front of him, uh, and he's gonna make some mumbo jumbo incantation noises, and then he's going to pull out a knife. Uh, and he's gonna try to do this um, subtly. Uh, he's trying to, like, <laughs> basically, like, hold the book in front of him to try to, like, hide that he's just pulling out a small knife. Sleight of hand. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I rolled a five, so... <laughs> And actually, he probably um, would make sense, and instead of mumbo-jumbo stuff, he, like, cast Guidance, and then is playing it off like he summoned a knife. But in <laughs> any case... Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, like, some of your companions, probably most of them, do notice what you're actually doing, uh, yeah. but the child is ecstatic. Uh, he just hops right where he's standing, he claps his hands together, and he says, How do I do it? How do I do it? Well, first you need in a knife. Uh, and Pontifex is going to give the kid his knife. <laughs> yep. Oh, he takes it. <laughs> He's very excited. In his hands, it's like a little sword. That is the only hint I'm going to give you. The rest you have to figure out yourself. I will work very hard. I am sure that you will. Can I have my book back? Uh, no. But, but I need it. Fair enough. And he'll give the book back. <laughs> <laughs> you make a convincing <laughs> argument. <laughs> Slight of any he was basically book. hoping that the kid would say okay and then leave, which means he doesn't <laughs> actually care about magic, and the professor <laughs> will be vindicated. He passed the test. He cares. Yeah, you pass the test. <laughs> you get your book back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he, he he takes the book back. Um, he is now holding, like he's pressing the the knife against the book and the book against his chest. Uh, and it's all probably kind of dangerous the way he's doing it. Don't press the um, knife to your chest and it's fine. <laughs> he's he's staring up a pontifex like he is he's uh, his his ear. Um, just eyes sparkling, and he says, Mister. Which kind of magic do you do? The best kind. Is it dreaming magic? Uh, I'm going to uh, hold my little astrolabe in front of the kid uh, and like, you know, twiddle my fingers over it or whatever because it needs a somatic component. And uh, I'm going to cast Press the Digitation like a couple of times and just make like a cute little show of this astrolabe just like little fireworks and like puffs of smoke that smells kind of like gunpowder and like 
uh, like the air around it becomes a little bit cooler and like a li the little blue light inside of it kind of changes colors a couple of times. Mm -hmm. He just makes his little, his little astrolabe into like a little children's show. He is delighted. Now, uh, we're on the long end of the old magic. Don't tell anyone I was nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a reputation. Okay, I'm going to go practice now. Great. Bye, mister. Uh, don't run with the knife. He runs away. <laughs> Good enough. Just give that child a knife. Uh, no, I gave him a dream. <laughs> a goal. A vision. I gave him something to aspire to be. And a knife. <laughs> and the knife was the first step. Fair enough. Honestly, he looked a little more alive than me, so uh, perhaps the knife was more dangerous in my hands. Uh, I can be clumsy, <laughs> except for once in a blue moon whenever I need to fool a child. <laughs> <laughs> Removing small knife from inventory. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, okay. Uh, I did, um, you know, speak the language and the kid was okay with it, so maybe we can converse with the children alone. That sounded weird. <laughs> <laughs> Forget I said anything. Redcon. <laughs> I mean, are we going to talk about that at all? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, are we going to talk about that at all, that understand them now I mean supposedly we understand the Ladarian Draconic so uh, would it surprise me if we understood m things um, didn't we know you speak elvish normally uh, I understand uh, not elvish uh, Sylvan I just want to see something and she'll just say a greeting and it's a basic greeting in Elvish to see if Pontifex can understand it. He, does oh, he not. probably understands the most basic greetings oh. in Elvish on account oh. of living with them constantly. Like, I know the hola, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then go a little more complicated. She's like, well, I know how to say that. A little more complicated. Yeah. Yeah, you, you guys test it out. So Pontifex does not speak Elvish. Uh, this is a shot in the dark. The, you happen to know from your times and the sea in the more of Ladarian languages? Uh, no, just uh, common elvish. Where is Telex when you need him? At the bottom of the ocean. I suppose I couldn't <laughs> understand uh, as in fair, so. Curious how far this might go. I would presume it is the languages native to the dragons, the twins, and their worshippers. So that is an odd gift. It's certainly useful, though. It's nice not, not knowing. All right, now I can. Tell the Lord of the Skies what is going to happen before I reap him from the skies. <laughs> so, while Pontifex and the kid were interacting, um, and the rest of you were talking to the Vami and Freda, what did you, and did you not tell them? I would say everything but the answers to our own questions, or that we were able to ask those questions in the first place. Like the, the the star questions about our futures. Mm -hmm. Basically, you you like you described the dungeon and what you had to go through uh, to get to the dragons, and then you got to the dragons, and the dragons took the water away and like made peace. Yeah. Yeah. I'd leave okay. out yeah. the stuff about our personal lives and destinies. Yeah, they don't need okay. our backstories. Yeah, it's not the time. <laughs> it's not the time for your backstories. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Uh, so roughly those things were happening at the same time. Um, Parshio eventually comes back. Uh, you might remember that, like, the food in Dustfall uh, was always... Like, you guys m mainly just made your own uh, through, through magic. Um, uh, whatever there was to be eaten uh, in in this area uh, rarely was ever a plant matter and it was usually animals that were uh, um, whose meat was particularly difficult to reach because they were always protected by by, uh, by the stone shells or they were poisonous um, so what you're getting is mainly uh, animal meat and uh, some berries uh, it's definitely not a feast, uh, not particularly fancy, but there is more than enough food for all of you. Um, Harsha, uh, as he's bringing over food, he, he asks uh, Tekka about Squeak's diet, like whether he eats at all and if they need to accommodate for, for anything in particular. Uh, he asks if any of you have any like food allergies, he's being very... I'm just very thoughtful about the whole thing. He asks if there is any food you cannot eat. Oh, I won't eat meat. I won't any, eat, eat anything but meat. <laughs> <laughs> Hip and Squeak work it out eventually. <laughs> I prefer crustaceans and mussels. <laughs> <laughs> they try, they're not available. Or they should. Really? <laughs> uh, okay. uh, yeah, then Tekka would convey that and would also offer um, any trade or rations if like Tekka has any rations that would be easier for them to eat, like offer a trade. Yeah, you, you sort out the food. Um, it from from these interactions, you learn from Tarsha that like um, everything they eat are things that uh, uh, grow either exclusively or just really well underground. Uh, there is a lot uh, and a great variety of mushrooms in their diet, in particular. Um, turns out there's also some kinds of uh, of rocks. They basically have different kinds of salts uh, or like spices that are get gotten from, from rocks that they seem to be um, uh, dearly missing uh, on the surface. Um, and ultimately, Tekka, you hardly have anything that they can eat, but they'll, they'll take what you offer. Um, whatever does work for them. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you guys want to do or talk about in this place? Well, what's next for the party? So where are we going? Are we going for the, to deal with this sand? I do think it is prudent to uh, um, tackle some send... of this business with Pip. Otherwise, I wish to find the hole. Uh, oh yeah, the hole in the middle of the land. Yeah, I'm working on a very crazy conspiracy theory that the moment that we have a cork board, I would be glad to show all of you, but until <laughs> then, it is formulating. But I do think it all leads back to the hole, suddenly. <laughs> I can send Squeak to go get the sand, and maybe a couple of other ingredients? Don't push it, kid. <laughs> this is your task, not mine. But sure, I'll get you some sand. Yeah. Should oh. I go now? Right now? So fast is a better, right? I'm... Bye! Turns into <laughs> a bird and flies away. I was going to ask Why did he have how... to turn into a bird? He has whatever. I'm faster <laughs> as a bird! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you won't be able to speak to Pip for a really Armored long bird. time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how pressed on time are we do we need to go straight there can we I don't know maybe inform Orm that we lost his um, 
constructs. Do we need to? I mean, I think we have to go back there eventually, right? I mean, it seems that... Sure, but like, maybe long enough for him to forget? <laughs> I feel like he won't forget about those. They were very large and very impressive. You guys still have one mechanical raven with you, right? Do we? I think okay. one bird would... <laughs> I feel like you guys kept a bird. We definitely kept some things. We can I suppose bring this back to him or keep it with us. You all seem to know at least some of where we're going better than I do. This is all just I'm, I'm still processing all of this. What we need to learn will be further into the land. That should be our next point. <clears throat> have... After our meal, I will go and tell them that I will be leaving. Will they be fine getting back to where they came from? I know there's still that dragon roaming around. I mean, they're good here, right? I think they want to go home. Yeah, but they go to this place fine by themselves. So they probably find some way back as well. I just know our small group had a close encounter. I would just like to confirm with them, at least. I think for me, for personal reasons, <clears throat> somehow getting, besides the sand, you also needed another ingredient, right, Pip? So getting that stuff, waking up some Jamil. So... What was the other thing you needed to get, besides the sand? Look at it, you're a charade. Pip, yeah, <laughs> Pip, Pip spreads his arms out and then flaps them. Boards. And then points at one of his fingers. Bird fingers. <laughs> Pip nods slowly with a bit of a head tilt. And, and then he points at one of his teeth. Birds don't, have, birds don't uh, have teeth. Shakes his head. Birds don't have teeth, you <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> he he uh he puts his arms tight to his body and sort of wiggles around. <laughs> <laughs> and, then points at his, worse. Point, and then points at his canine fang. Would you All like right. some paper to write this down on? <clears throat> would that be easier? <laughs> that would make it too easy. Hip size. <laughs> I prefer the suffering. Pulls out a lump of coal from his <laughs> and from his pouch and then writes down bird feather. It's horribly misspelled. And uh, poison fang. Baby bird feather we can and, probably get from. And, and then he 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 
he thinks about it for a second and then makes a correction and before bird he puts baby. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> baby bird feather we can potentially get from Kovic, right? Say we're looking for the axe. Did they ever return them to their parents? We can ask him for that. Virun suddenly remembers having seen a family of uh, of stone birds walking around. Babies following the mother. Yeah, there are there are a lot of baby birds uh, near the cave, which is back to where they're all going. Well, I'll see with them. We will. We can get that to get the uh, Fang. We probably have to travel deeper into the land, right? Shrugs. Then wake up, Jemuel. And then we'll see from there. So in the morning, we escort them back home, find the feather, then explore inwards into the land. Yeah. I think that sounds as fair as anything. Two birds with one stone, if you will. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> Not really, I just can't think of another uh, saying that fit better. <laughs> Those little on the nose. The birds have noses. I think you Different professor. question. I didn't realize you were an ornithologist, too. Uh, There's a problem. I'm not. <laughs> or I would know the answer. Anyways, so. Uh, while Squeak is up, uh, getting blue sand, sky, sky sand, we are going. Can we pull up the map? <laughs> That's what I was just about to do. <laughs> the moment I zoom out <laughs> to get the map, you're like, can you get the map? Map, 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 map. map. So, I guess we don't really know why, where the center is exactly. Because we haven't explored everything yet. Like, who knows? Yeah, there could be a whole bunch north of us. Here. Right, like, here, do fine. we know if there is or isn't a very large landmass to the north? Uh, to the north from we where? We know there's something over here across the sea. There's like yeah. a sea and then something else over here. Okay. This is but why like, I have a height like map. A, a, let, me, let me go fetch it. Like a giga one up here or something. Uh, okay, that's where you said. Oh no. It's going to take me a moment to load it. Think of all your questions. <laughs> I load for my machine. Uh, boop. Okay. So, all right. Lovely. What do you want to know? What were you asking, Matt? No, I was saying, do we know if there is a... Like... Is the landmass of Ladaria just like that, or do we know? Can we confirm existence or lack thereof of like a gigantic landmass farther north? Like, do we know how north Ladaria goes? Because nobody can fly over it and nobody can yep. uh, um, navigate in the waters around it, it is still unclear how big and what the shape of Ladaria is, uh, which is why the Jamio's discoveries and the publication of the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria are a big deal. That was supposed to be the first time when um, somebody had covered the entire thing 
on foot and would have published like a full complete map of the entire continent so nothing is confirmed there's rumors and like if you guys share your rumors you would immediately see that they all contradict each other you've all he heard different things from different people um so there's just no answer that you can definitely get there's definitely a lot of people who will say that the continent is like way bigger than anyone knows but the majority of people really just know this section So as far as our options of places to go, we could try and head towards the middle, but we don't know exactly where that hole is. Um, but there are things that we do know we need in hot areas, and we've we've seen that canyon is a is a very hot area. We know Virian needs something there, and this is very close to the place where Tekka needs to go across the sea. So if we went that way, we'd be we'd be ticking a couple of things off our list. For to get across the sea, we have to like go make friends with a devil or something. Alternatively, we could take a detour, check out the second the one who stares, and then maybe pop down to find Jamuel's staff. Yeah, I think the and then we'd be closer are... to the center of the earth, or the center of the land. Maybe we'd figure out where that is. I feel just for the you know, sake of not backtracking across an entire continent if we don't need to. Hit the closer ones first. Yeah, in terms of navigating, I think that just makes sense if we take that route. But... Is this is this important? Like, I don't even remember when we got this rumor. <laughs> Talis got it from the archaeology the club, not club, a team <laughs> that uh, he like he, he was considering signing up for back in Simlielon. Uh, he was sharing rumors and such, and he heard that, that there is another machine, much like the one who stares um, somewhere near a lake in the north, the western, so it was like okay. over here. So that'd be a good place to maybe learn more about the Nahadra. And then we'd be close to Jamil's staff, which would be close to middle of Ladaria, maybe somewhere around here. And also, we'd be somewhat close to wherever that glass castle's supposed to be. <gasps> I think that might be down here, so it's not that close. Because <laughs> they was, weren't we told like follow the edge until you reach a river? What you were told. Uh, let me get to this. Is follow the coastline until you find a river with two statues flanking it. Follow oh. that river. Then when you find the road, follow it to the northeast. You find a lake, and that's where the castle is. Oh, so it's one of these. Or it could be... Maybe. Or it could be... No, it wouldn't be that. Because it could be any river that's flanked by two statues. It wouldn't be this one because we were past that one uh, when we got the the tip to follow the coastline. This inward. So it's inward because it's past the peninsula, right? Am I remembering that correctly? Which means it has to be this one. I think if I'm if I'm deciphering that correctly. I mean it makes sense to me that it would be that one. Um, yeah, I guess it just depends on like what we want to prioritize. Uh, <laughs> do we want to take that detour and explore that lake before we go northeast? I mean I think it's closer. And we're kind of already going in that direction. It's going to be a shorter jaunt to get there from where we're yeah, heading definitely. in the circle. Then go back and who knows if we get across the ocean or the sea and what if we can't get back easily. Mm. Right. Yeah, fair point. 
Is there any indication that Jamuel's staff would help us to awaken him? I have a theory about it, but... So, maybe. <laughs> but I don't think there's anything that we have learned. We don't do theories here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, I'm all for going this, like, straight line through all these hotspots. I think that sounds fun. It, it may be a straight line, but this is this is a very long trip. <laughs> it, it is a long it's, trip. It's going to be a long trip regardless. Yeah. It, what is it, like one day per hex of travel? Um, approximately, yes. There so, can be complications, so you can travel faster if you have any means means to do so. So, like, at least 10 or 11 days before we get to the one who stares, and then another 10 or 11 days before we get to Jamuel's staff? If we can get to this river here in the center of the circle, if we can... If there is something there or some way to get a decent boat, the rivers are safe to navigate on water. Oh, yeah. That's true. And someone in the party knows how to steer a boat. So. <coughs> I wonder if Frida and Devamia would be willing to like give us a wyvern ride over to the, the lake. A relay ride? <laughs> After two, everything... There's too much to carry, though. We've got horses. <laughs> Who decided to get horses? But maybe two, maybe a few of us could ride horses, and maybe they'd be willing to drop us, drop the non-riders off, just to save us some travel time. If you try to run that idea by them, um, they're not un like unwilling to help. But Murder Claw can't carry more than two people. Oh. It's just not possible. Can we fit two people on each horse? Or are they not built for that? We also have five people, right? Yeah. Well, we have four and a half. Yeah. Mm. Oh, literally, Pip is a small sized creature. Pip can turn into an animal. True. You can have an extra horse. For oh, yeah, a couple okay. hours. Yeah, anyway. you're also part And horse. then rest, and then... Well, actually, polymorph is one of those things I can only do once per day. I think just... Wait! I can conjure it. woodland beings! <laughs> okay, all right. And that includes so, horse? It, uh, maybe. <laughs> I, I'm not actually clear if Pip can choose what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Could Pip choose, like, hey, I want some horses? <laughs> or is the it rules, like, up to the whims of fate? <laughs> the rules are you, um, you either conjure a creature you have successfully conjured before or you spin the roulette and you get something new gotcha we're gonna we're gonna try yeah that's that's fun to me i mean worth trying i mean they're they're always beasts so if i aim for some some high level beasts they're probably gonna be i guess they don't big, technically have speed. to be horses just like yeah. large size creature you could ride a couple of bears down there <laughs> <laughs> couple of arma boss too adolescents would you like to conjure um, woodland beings well i mean i so pip could do that twice and then all he'd need is a short rest and then he'd be able to do it again twice and he lasts, and so, what, an hour? It lasts an hour each time. You can even take a short rest on them <laughs> while riding. That's true. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> we found the hack. We've done it. Found it's cheat code. <laughs> it is. I don't think you can concentrate while resting. 
Oh. That was sleeping. I don't know. I remember the resting thing is like not doing any strenuous act like activity more strenuous than like eating. Yeah. I, don't know if I mean, up, up to you, Winther, if concentrating on a spell is... I mean, if stubbing your toe bad enough can break your concentration. Yeah. I don't think I've ever come across this before. Apparently, can you maintain but... concentration through a short rest? The internet says yes. Nice. The internet is always right. Nice. I trust the internet. <laughs> well, do we want to give that a try? I like that plan. So we've got two horses, and uh, we've only got five people that we need to carry with us. Yes? I'm, I'm not forgetting any other weird companions. I think that's right. Okay. So maybe I'll try the two fey creatures of challenge rating one or lower. I don't know why it says or lower. I don't want lower. If I wanted lower, I would choose more creatures. <laughs> of <them. laughs> uh, sure. So, are we? Do we have anything else we need to do here, or do we just want to say say our goodbyes and scoot? I mean, were we gonna escort them back to? Uh, I mean, I guess we could get a baby bird feather. Yeah, someplace to, to, else to pick up. I mean, we're not that I, far from a baby bird. I feel like any baby bird that's going to be here is made of stone, and I'm not sure if Granny right. is wanting that. Can you polymorph yourself into a baby bird? <laughs> hey, there's a thought. <laughs> Turn into a snake, take my teeth out. <laughs> the item would not persist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I figured. laughs> then just stay Please. a snake I've had like this 15 minute long conversation one time with a player who was like what if I <laughs> the druid was like what if I turn into a chicken and I lay an egg <laughs> <laughs> and then we cook and eat said egg and then it became like a whole thing again. and if you digest it and it becomes parts of your cells do your cells disappear what if I turn into a cow and you milk me? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> anyway, what are we doing? Oh, that player was a riot. Yeah, I guess this is the question. Do we want to escort them back and get the feather that way? Or do we just want to take the gamble, head somewhere? I mean, we'll probably find a baby bird someplace else. It'll be fine. But nothing bad will happen to them. I, I mean, we could ask the Vamia, Freyd, Freyda, and Murderclaw to That's escort true. them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've only got horrific sandworm wizards and undead immortal dragons to worry about. Yeah. They, they live there. They, they mostly got it figured out. I'd be down with asking Frida, Frida and the Vamia to escort them before they head off on their own adventures. I think that's a good call. I don't want to go back to Narashka third time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair, fair. Um, so, yeah, the Mami and Freda have been, like, near you this whole time. They ate with you when you guys started doing your own plans. They kind of moved off to the side and were looking over their own notes and couple of times you call them over ask them things and uh, um then they go back to a little, little corner uh and uh, uh as you ask them about what they plan to do and whether they're planning on uh, heading with the Kralko back to uh Narash, they actually uh both nod um Devamia particularly excitedly so and says right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh we're we're <laughs> we have so much more to study uh there's so much about their culture, the culture that we don't understand yet. Um, and they don't seem to hate us anymore. They don't treat us as well as they seem to be treating you now, but um, we'd like to stick around. Wait. Ah, you seem happy about it. You wanted us to, be, you thought we'd go somewhere? What are you guys thinking about? 
Come on, talk to me. Come on, am I not your favorite orc? What are you planning? Where are you going? What are you going to do? <clears throat> okay, all right. I can see you're all shaken from meeting the gods. I just want you guys to know that uh, everything we've done together and all these experiences we've shared, they've been really interesting. Interesting is certainly a word I would use for them. Oh, I've had so much fun. I can't wait to write this all down. She like grins. Are you planning to write it all down? Well, I'm not going to keep it all in my head, am I? At least keep in mind who learns all the info you have gained. Uh huh. Yeah, of course. Understand what publishing leads to before you publish it. This conversation just took a strange turn. <laughs> it's going to be all right, guys. I am just adding on to what Tech is saying. This is a good point. Hey, uh, maybe we'll see you around uh, somewhere back on the peninsula? We are many journeys ahead of us. But one day... We'll... Nearly none of them are on the peninsula. Well, that's a shame. But I'm sure if you're... Uh, planning on traveling all around Lidaria and uh, apparently not anywhere near the peninsula, uh, then eventually I'll be hearing about your adventures. I mean, it's gotta make you famous. I feel like if we... all goes well, you'll see us back on the peninsula someday, at least. And if all goes well, you will not hear about it. That would be my hope. Well, I wish you good luck. Good luck to you as well, and thank you for your support. Hey, thank you for getting me out of that coffin that one time. <laughs> you all have a lot of explaining to do on some of these things. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah? Uh, Ivami yeah. seems to be in good spirits. She makes a couple of remarks on how she wishes she could understand the language of the Krelko. <laughs> <laughs> I will awesome. really speed up her research. You mostly just hear people judging you. Yeah, probably. Uh, Tekka's gonna take a quick trip. Um, first to the couple that was taking care of Ollie. Uh, just gonna let them, like, say their goodbyes to Ollie. Um, and then also going to visit Tarsho and just ask him to, um, please welcome Devamia and, uh, Freda, uh, as uh, that day will help them back home. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're not planning on speaking in the, in the uh, crowd, you'd probably go pick up Tarsho first uh, uh, to like translate with well, the it, couple. It... Oh right, yeah, yeah, fair point, fair point. Yeah. Uh, but uh, regardless, mm -hmm. um, yeah, they they're just the two of them are happy to to see Ollie again, um, and they just uh, they just wish you good luck uh, on your journey. Um, Tarsha is back to being really nervous about uh, uh, everything that's going to happen and the fact that they have to relocate again and uh, all the work that's ahead of them and um, 
there's so much that let's obviously going through his head and he overshares a little bit and he still doesn't share uh yeah like you understand he still doesn't share anywhere near half of what he's worried about <laughs> um but uh he w when he manages to bring the conversation back to the to the actual subject he he like clears up his throat and he seems to be like really thinking hard um about uh, how to express what's going through his mind uh, and then eventually he just says this has been um, the most unique experience of my life and a lot of it has been scary and stressful and sudden and I had to uh, step up uh, for, for Fen who died right before you guys arrived which was this really terrible timing and uh, I just hope that I did a good job. You have done well. And you have survived all of this. That only means you can make it so much further. Uh, you, you are... You are very interesting, Tekka. I, I'm still very sorry for how we have treated you. I, I hope, um, d despite how I may feel about her, I, I hope that Leshkri is doing well. Leshkri has a lot to learn. Being okay is a matter that will take time. All I ask, do not use those ashes. Uh, ever? Our meeting could have gone much, much different. I ask <laughs> only that you consider that for the future. Fair enough. Yeah, um... Things are going to change around here, I suppose. Well, to, to a degree. We never really get visited by... anyone. <laughs> um... But in case... Uh, an, in case anyone shows up, there will be no separation. Um... Kalvik seems really set on it. Set on what exactly? Oh, um, well, he wants to establish some new rules. Uh, and also after that, he says he might, he might, uh, um, retire. Um, let the younger generations D decide how to approach everything. Uh, all he does, it's a little beyond me. I, I never really interacted much with him, but suddenly they needed a translator and I speak as a fair and then everything happened. I just, I don't even do <laughs> magic. You can do much without magic. Well, uh, Magic is helpful. Um, there is uh, one time I I have been uh, actually uh, I could uh, stay right there, and he runs off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> about ten or fifteen minutes later, he comes back oh and he's God. yeah he's sweaty a little bit, uh, uh, but he is holding a. Um, great, the word is escaping me right now. The um... <laughs> what do you call it in English? Oh, Could no. you describe it? It's the thing you use to water flowers, watering can, watering can, watering can. thank you. Uh, so oh, he's holding this watering can. Um, the design very much tells you what it is, but you've never seen one that is made 
of uh, uh, Crystal. It's it, it, it's almost like it's been like it's a model of a watering can that's just been made for like display, like a really weird piece of art. Um, the the gem that it's being carved out of it's almost completely clear. Uh, there's a few wisps of uh, almost like white smoke uh, that you can see through it, and you can see that uh, because it's almost entirely transparent, you can see that there's currently uh, nothing inside. Uh, and uh, he, he he holds it up for Tekka to see, and uh, he says, uh, "This one is uh, it's magical. I I have I was gifted two of them by my uh, <laughs> friend, and um, I don't need to. So um, I d I don't know if you or any of your friends are interested in plants, but." This will guarantee that um, you can grow anything, regardless of the um, the dirt at your disposal. <laughs> uh, you you can have it. It's like awkwardly shoving it in your arms. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Tekka accepts it and looks upon it. This... Y you will have to put water in it. I don't know why I said that. Obviously, you need to put water in it. Magic, you can never know. So, <laughs> I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. so, this is not a gift meant for me, but I know someone who would enjoy this a great deal. So, thank you. Uh, pass it on, then. Tell them about me. <laughs> I will. Uh, I should go. I wish you well. Yeah, well, um, thanks. Uh, you too. See you around. He stands around for a few seconds before finally stepping away. He looks back and waves. And then he's yeah. gone. Tech waves back. Uh, and yeah, Tech uh, will just head back. I don't know if we're around the campfire or where we are, but yeah, just showing the watering can to the group. If any wish to grow plants, this will aid you. Oh, hey, you know what we could do? There's an empty room in you can't speak. Aaron's uh, tower. Yeah. Oh, shoot! <laughs> <laughs> moving Porphyry. his lips, no sound I, comes out. I write. <laughs> <laughs> he writes all of that. Plant You're room. actually writing. Oh. <laughs> Plant room? Plant room. Question mark. In the tower? Or... If not. Hmm. Perhaps. But I will need this back at the end of our travels. Anyway, I I feel tired. Are we okay starting tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think we all could use a little rest. We rest. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Were you waiting for me to say something? Yes. Oh, no. 
Always. I, that was the moment when I got up for a second to grab my water bottle and I come back to this long silence and I'm like, oh, ah, man. damn it, Sorry. I missed something. It wasn't that long, don't worry. <laughs> it felt really long. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, what yeah. did you say? You're, you're resting? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I was thinking, because uh, we got refreshed from the twins' blessing, right? Yeah, so you feel like you just long actually, rested. Feel... Yeah, okay. And what time of day are we at? Because, like, the time dilation nonsense, it didn't actually take that long. That's correct. But do I remember when you got here? <laughs> no, I feel like it was knows, around so noon. Am I crazy? Let's call no. it, like, 1 p.m. Okay. Unless like, you want it to be also, evening. Like... Do you guys want it to be evening? <laughs> Wait, because we also, like, <laughs> eaten and have talked to people and... There's waiting time in there, so it's probably at least early evening by this point. Yeah. Sure. Um, it can be early evening. So while we're while we're all getting ready for bed, uh, Pip is going to lay out his stones and cast augury. Um, basically asking the stones uh, about what the results may be for uh, us planning to head to. This, this, this place. Ooh. Where the second, the one who stares is rumored to be. That's fun. Okay. Uh, you may want to do that right before you leave because it has to be something, a course oh, of action you plan to take within the next 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, then I got a question. Uh, yes? Because now you've reminded me about it uh, in a roundabout. Uh, that dust swept grimoire, uh, the spell book that mm-hmm. I found on the corpse of He Slithers. Mm-hmm. I couldn't read it before, right? That's right. Can I read it now? You still can't. It was written in Itaran. That's why, um, okay. that's why uh, Devamia had offered to help decipher it. Yeah. She can get some work uh, done on it until you guys leave. So like a few hours tonight. But- yeah. That sounds um, great, because now the professor has seen uh, a budding Ladarian wizard child uh, who is <laughs> failing to do magic, but still, he's trying to do magic that the professor also does not comprehend. He feels very, like, small. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, not that, like, oh, they they have, like, Ladarian stuff to just recreate the magic that we do, but that the kid was trying to do a spell that the professor has never even heard of, uh, something that can just create weapons. Uh, that's new. So he, yeah, he's feeling like a little outdone by a child, even though the child didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, cast knife. So he like, <laughs> maybe I don't want to learn this Ladarian mumbo jumbo. I cast a viral TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guarantee that that scene has taken place somewhere in this, uh, in this settlement <laughs> right now where a parent has shouted, let me see what you have. I know. Um, Exactly that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. But yeah. That, so that's what the yeah, we'll do with this downtime. Is mm-hmm. he's gonna go with Devami as like a you know, before we uh, go separate ways? Uh, perhaps you could help me with this. Okay. Help. Um. Just roll an Arcana check for me at advantage. Uh, the two of you working together to decipher as much of the dust swept grimoire uh, as possible in what little time you have left before you go your separate ways. 24. Four. <clears throat> okay. With a 24, staying up also a few extra hours into the night as you're making good progress and um, you're not quite willing to stop researching this as things are going well and Devana is... The mom is always curious about anything. Um, her kind of magic is nowhere near as advanced as yours, but she does know a few spells. You've seen her speak with, with animals, so, um, do a few other things, and uh, um, she seems engrossed less in the magic and more in the fact that uh, it, you are holding a Lidarian object uh, and you are. It's not like no less. Mm, yeah, and you're investigating like magic of the Lidarian kind, and like this is, this is a big discovery to her as well. And he um, would tell so her about, like, where he got it. 
about the Slithers. She was there. She helped oh, yeah, do yeah, it. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I <laughs> um, forgot that's who Sib was controlling. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, even though she's not a wizard, what I'm saying is that she's very much engrossed in this process as much as you are. And you two end up staying up a few a few more hours than you should have. Um, both of you eventually falling asleep and then waking up before everybody else and just going back to it because you're this close uh, to figuring something out. Um, so you end up successfully translating one spell one spell of uh, uh, first level uh, with a roll that high and despite the time being that short um, mm -hmm. it will still require whatever process you need to quote unquote copy it uh, mm -hmm. but you can do that without the Vamya uh, just on the road whenever you had the materials and the time uh, so okay. you understand the, what this spell does uh, in general notes, and then once you actually copy it, I will give you the, the full uh, actual text of the spell. Uh, yeah. This is called Blood like Reading. Blood uh, Reading? Mm -hmm. It uh, essentially allows you to examine blood and determine uh, uh, the kind of creature it comes from, and the circumstances it was spilled under, and so on. Uh, it's a little blood analysis spell. Okay, you and that's can compare samples. Mm hmm. Uh, is this a, is it a ritual spell? Am I able to determine that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. I haven't decided <laughs> it's, it's not yet. Ritual, it's <laughs> okay. Not a big deal. Okay. Uh, you know, there was an inspiring scholar uh, to you, not just a... A weird journalist who really do something productive with this. Sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> he said that uh, she is an aspiring scholar and not just a, a weird journalist, and that she could actually like do something meaningful with this talent of hers. She... He's kind of he's giving her a backhanded compliment without meaning yeah. to. Like, there is this long pause where you can tell she's trying to, like, extrapolate any additional meaning that it might be behind your words. <laughs> and you can tell that, like, she doesn't quite get there. And she just grins widely and says, wow, a compliment. Well, thank you very much, Professor. And after all of this is over, if, uh, if you want to learn some stuff, it is the least I could do. I'll consider Maybe teach your you offer. Maybe some magic once I master it and bend it to my will. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, just get in touch with me when you do. Mm. Well, uh, I I'll write an article about magic. you. There was a spell uh, today with a kid, and it just creates weapons. Maybe something more up your alley. You mean I can just make yeah, axes? Yeah, ever find yourself without an axe and wishing that you had an axe? I always have my axe with me, but I could always use a second one. All right, well, you can poof and make more. Apparently, I don't know. I will investigate this. You said Great. it was a kid here. A, a quail child with a book and a knife. A I a knife. I will find this child. Mm -hmm. It is the top uh, forty-two percent of the sixty-fourth page uh, from the back. Um, she takes a notebook out and writes it down. <laughs> okay, got it. I'll find him. Right. I will, I will make him talk, and I will find out everything he knows. Right. Well, be careful. Oh. Uh, he has a Exciting. knife. Exciting. Oh. Right. Mm. Dangerous. She holds up her her hands. All time for you to go. All time for us to go as well. I'll go wake up Freda. I. Uh, I'll see you around, right? See you around, uh, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Unlock the secrets of the cosmos and let me know about them. I will let you know about the answers I find to the universe and everything else. Yeah, Freda is off. 
<clears throat> Freda, det var mer. En Freda. Okej. Okay. Is this the path that you guys have chosen? You're gonna travel, um, buy food with your animals and such. Um, first to this lake you've heard about. Is this what a party has agreed on? Until we get distracted, yes. Yes. Until, yeah. <laughs> okay. Until there's another side quest. Let's do one more thing. Um, I believe Pip wants to conjure some animals. Is it morning? Uh huh. Uh, did you roll for something? No. <gasps> I have not. Ah, where do I find it on your sheet again? Under Soothsaying. Where is it? Oh, there it is. The last thing. <clears throat> I need to stop putting away my dice roller. Okay. Nothing special. Then yes, augury for the same specifications. Mm -hmm. The exact question is? Uh, well, it's not really a question. The exact I, uh, sentence. We plan on heading southeast to the lake where a robot might be. <laughs> 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 Remind me, what do you do for augury? Is it, is it bones? Uh, oh, it's a rock. Gets out his rock collection. Yeah, and right. Spinning around. I am unsure if uh, Virin has seen this before. I don't think so. Um, but Virin would see Pip. Uh, he plays around with his rock collection every once in a while. That's nothing new. But um, like the way he's going about it seems to be less of a game and more um, just. Very precise positioning, uh, as if following some kind of pattern that you're not really seeing. Um, some of them he just he just throws throws at them and watches where they where they roll and what side they land on. Um, he, and he seems just very focused on this process that it takes a little bit. Um, nothing seems to come of it from. Uh, um, from you just looking in from the outside. Uh, Pip, based, um, based on uh, um, the result that you're reading, um, the, um, the answer is both wheel and woe. Sounds good to Pip. He is <laughs> not concerned. <laughs> Alright. Should we summon some animals? Spin the roulette wheel, see what we get? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do two creatures of challenge rating one. Um, is Pip thinking of any particular animals as he does this? Uh, just... Something to ride, preferably, not a okay. specific animal. I'll give you a little hint. Turtle. You gotta go way lower <laughs> on the challenge rating list. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Can't ride a bear. Mm. Uh, <laughs> how, how low I gotta go? <laughs> <laughs> Just go with the one quarter and then uh, we'll see if you hit anything. I get eight of them? Okay. You don't have to High chance it. of hitting. You it. don't have to. The, the whole reason why it says uh, X challenge rating or lower is if you don't want eight of them. Okay. Uh, but okay. you want eight chances to land. That doesn't work like that. <laughs> 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 What's better than two horses but eight horses? Then they could ride on top of each other like Voltron. What? <laughs> is, is this like the centaur stack? <laughs> hmm. Let's see our centaurs. 
Uh, all right, let's go with let's go with two of one fourth. One, two, three. Oh, woo woo, indeed, Stevie. <laughs> your your first attempt successfully no. summons. Uh, roll a d8. I'm so scared. How many did you say you wanted? Two? Two. Five. <laughs> You're not really sure what you summoned because they're invisible. <laughs> huh? <laughs> but it just reaches out in front of him, <laughs> and you hear a little squeak. Patting around. Squeak, oh, squeak. Her arm. Uh, you have a couple <laughs> of Ladarian rats. Here. Hey, <laughs> I'm sleeping here. <laughs> <laughs> All seven of my invisible squeaky friends. <laughs> Well, <laughs> can't really write on those, but. <laughs> hmm. Sorry, guys. Can't say that, but that's what he wishes he could say. Hmm. <laughs> you can see it on his face. Just. I wish I could keep you. Pip's not even going to keep them around. He's just gonna <laughs> poof them away. <laughs> Wait, can't you try again tomorrow? I can try again right now. <laughs> Let's give it another try. That's exactly what I read from your facial Roll a d8. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, Steve. It's been like crazy. It's okay. Need to roll a d8. Anything except for rat. What is that? The six? Okay. That's not a D8, that's a D10. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, distracted the Martin. Two. Uh <laughs> Wow. There's only one way this could have... Okay. <laughs> you have successfully summoned two fast horses. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. <laughs> Nailed <laughs> it. Oh my god. I did nice it! Try. They are first riding try, horses. Uh, they are... Since there's two of them, one looks like Talix's and one looks like Pontifex's because those are the two horses that Pepe has like, the most... The strongest Aww. association with. Um, and they are fast on a roll of a two, which means that they ha both have 10 extra feet of base movement. Oh my goodness. Nitro boost. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Who wants so, this of extra your speed available horses? animals that you can just summon, like, willingly, you can add a riding horse and a rat um, to your Great. sheet. <laughs> it just obeys the stat blocks. Okay. Uh, Pip will ride Duchess. Duchess if, if the Duchess second allows. or Duchess Duchess? Duchess Duchess. Duchess. Um, Duchess has allowed mm -hmm. it previously and like you... Uh, can you speak with animals without squeak? Because I think yes. you can, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, so yeah, you know the rituals to go through. He never animal noises through squeak. He mm -hmm. always made the noises through himself. You know what it takes to convince a duchess, um, and so you just you just praise her and you ask her very nicely, and you let her know how uh, precious she is and how much uh, um, how impressive she is, and eventually yeah. enough flatter takes you there. Uh, and then she's immediately surpassed by the fast magical horses, and she seems <laughs> a little upset at this. Who's doubling up? I'm going to ride Speedy Duchess. Speedy Duchess. <laughs> um, I have terrible news, my friends, but these drawings are not going to survive. Uh-huh. Um, That's okay. Are you 
But if you guys if you guys love drawing on the map, I can make it so that the drawings will actually carry over. But right now, I don't have the tool that happens. One second, I can see. Yeah. screenshot I it. it. I, I got it. I think we all got it. <laughs> I Everybody got post it. your own version of the screenshot in Discord. Right. And then we'll judge. <laughs> Whoever took the one that's most better aligned. I resolution. That is definitely God, loses. He even has the what names in mean? the top right. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Why I do I why do I get negative the points when awesome shows up on this thing? I should get bonus <laughs> points. <laughs> Bonus points for photo uh, photographing. I need to. Wait, why don't why don't the uh, the black circled areas show up on Jory's screenshots? Yeah, they're not on my screen. What? What? Really? It, yeah, look at like, them. One of these things is not like the other. Like right here, <laughs> where I'm circling. There's not a thing right here. This is the second T O W S. Uh, is it in the sky? <laughs> for you. Uh, I don't think Whoa. so. Okay, so if I click it and I drag it around a little bit, it doesn't show up for you? No. I mean, it says that you're... Can you do that again? Uh, yeah, one moment. Yeah. yeah, if you don't see it, I don't think you can see it. No. No. Whoa. Uh -huh. I, I okay. can see the, obviously the pin, but yeah, there's no black circle. We'll have to fix that. It's yeah. possible the object is broken and we're all seeing it because we all have it cached, uh, but you never had it. Yeah. Uh, but it's good to know. I'll work on that. Um, adding it to my list of things that I may never get to. Yes, the, yeah, the, model, the model is broken, that's what happened. Hmm. Okay. It's okay, Varian doesn't need to know all the rumors. No, fine. <laughs> Canonically, you do not know where, that there are things there. How much longer can everybody <clears throat> stay today? I have nothing else going on. I'm good yeah. forever. Probably like in a little over an hour. Okay, yeah. then so. let's take a time in a break. Woo! What? Um, so you've all packed your things. And uh, uh, you are ready to say goodbye to the remains of Stillian Dread, to the Krelko, and uh, head off um, towards uh, the general direction of the southeast, where you're hoping to eventually come across a lake. Uh, considering the scarcity of uh, water in the area of Dustfall, um, you know that the journey is going to take a while, you, uh, based on the information you have and the maps you have drawn, uh, you make an estimate of how long it will take you to actually get there. And uh, with uh, new horses, I'm going to place the things back. With new horses, some of them faster than others, um, you begin your journey. The last time you traveled through Dustfall, I believe you've let Brooke take the lead. Uh, is that uh. correct? Um, is it any different now? Would you like anyone in particular to, to be leading? Group effort... Group effort, maybe? I'm done now, for group effort. Now that the last time I let I got turned into stone. Now that <laughs> <laughs> That's not yeah, incorrect. Now that... <laughs> yeah. That is very <laughs> correct. I think now that Virian's had some time in the area, she's a little more confident in nudging in a direction. If needed. Okay. Sounds to me like Virion might take the lead then. Uh, if if y'all are confident. Yep. Yeah, make it happen. Yeah, sure, why not? Mm -hmm. We'll obviously help. Because that's the same. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's have uh, both Brooke and Virion roll, um, each of you Three survival checks, just one after the other. Mm. Wait, survival, or can I use like my navigation proficiency? Ooh, but I have navigator's tools. Right. Is that supposed to be specifically for the sea? 
I don't think so. No, no, it's just navigator's tools. The difference is between me getting a plus zero and me getting my proficiency bonus. Okay, 14, go for it. 15, 22. Oh. Mm. I don't want to be that guy. It's navigator's tools, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this like. set of instruments is used for navigation at sea. Uh, proficiency with tools lets you chart a ship's course and follow navigation charts. In addition, they allow you to add proficiency bonus to any ability check you make to avoid getting lost at sea. Again, still totally up to you. Yeah. I don't know what else it would be for like. How about cartographers? Cartographers' tools? Cartographer's yeah. tools? Is that that cartographers? That's it, true. I also have that. I also. Hey, have that. let's go with those. Yes. There it is. I can, I can also swap tool proficiencies every time I long rest, though. So. Nice. Okay. I feel less <laughs> bad. <laughs> like if there's a tool for it, I mean. Love it. Also, are those two natural 20s? Those are, those are one from each of us. <laughs> well done. No stones oh God, I saw this 48 and started sweating. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, that's not the one it is. Okay, 14, 16, 22, 23, 11, 18. Okay. So, it's been a while since I've added this, uh, this table. Not a table, like a table. A table of rules. Between the two of you, um, taking turns every once in a while throughout the day just to allow the other person to relax uh, um, and not have to be to pay as much attention to the road. <clears throat> um, it looks like Viren and Brooke are quite in sync. Viren has not navigated blindly through Dustfall previously, but the Brook fills her in on what the landscape is like and what to expect, which animals appear friendly or at least uh, um, uninterested in people and which ones to avoid. Um, and by putting their heads together and uh, um, thinking of the landscape and the map um, the, <laughs> that you have drawn over time, uh, the general direction where you're going, things are actually pretty smooth. Uh, you're not caught in any terrible disasters. It's just a slow, but um, and, and very dry journey, but one that for the time being is uninterrupted. Um, every um, every hour, Pip is able to bring the horses back. Uh, every once in a while, the horses are a little different. Uh, the first time around, uh, uh, the ones that Pip summoned were quite strong, uh, fast, I mean. Uh, there's one time when they are invisible, and uh, which makes you look kind of silly. Um, also, you're starting from me, but still in dread, so you're over here. Um, eventually, uh, as randomness would demand, There might be one particular time when the horses show up uh, a uh, too small to be ridden and Pip has to try to summon them again and this happens occasionally. He doesn't seem to have much control on the type of horses that he brings into existence but he does seem to be able now to make horses consistently at the very least. Um, because Pip is going to do, the, to do this many 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 times a day uh, I'm going to share with you, Austin, if if you're listening, um, the full list of possible effects. So, like, from from now on, you know what every D8 result actually um, is going to do. Because uh, you're basically going through them. So, the possible effects on number one, uh, it's a size change, which also requires another coin flip to decide whether they become bigger or smaller. Like, one size, bigger or smaller. Uh, number two is extra uh, 10 feet of movement, that's a fast one. Number three is adaptable, 
uh, where the animals might, uh, will gain resistance to a certain damage type. <laughs> Huge horses. Um, B. Four, tough, uh, where the summoned creatures are able to regenerate hit points. Five, unseen. This has happened a lot to Pip for some reason. It's the invisible variety. Um, six, shiny. Uh, they have strange colors and they emit light. Seven, mythical. Uh, their attacks count as magical. And eight, shadowy. Uh, they can... Uh, the, the creatures are like ghost-like and can, can move through other creatures and obstacles and squeeze through small spaces. Um... Uh, every once in a while you get shadowy horses, yes. <laughs> they can move through things. Goth horses. They you will not be able... Honorable. If you If you sit on them... <laughs> uh, can you... Uh, I, see, I see why you asked the question. Like, can we ride... Uh, but yes, I would say yes. Um... So they can just gallop headlong into a wall to confidently go through it while you, my friend, do not. <laughs> you would <laughs> hit the wall. <laughs> Splat. That might happen one time. That's that's on the day when uh, when Virion has a total of an 11. Um, yeah. <laughs> that particular day, there's these new horses and um, they confidently go through this large rock and somebody... Uh, eats a mouthful of dust and pebbles. Um, but lesson is learned, and uh, Pip's magic turns out to be whims whimsical and unpredictable in that uh, um, in that way, but at least uh, he, uh, like I said, he is able to produce the horses consistently. Uh, and you rely on that uh, um, to, be, to be able to all of you no longer really have to walk. I think this is the first time the party has had like a full set of uh, horses to ride on. Maybe there was one time when you rented some. Doesn't matter. Um, let's see. One, two. Okay, that would be... <clears throat> oh, I went one too far. I want to... Okay, hold on. Uh, every natural 20 is an extra day of travel that you gain for free. So that's one, Ooh. two, nice. third day, fourth day, and it's on the second natural 20. Okay, so it will be on the fourth day of travel when you're roughly over here. Um, the landscape around uh, this moment uh so here so i drew the line of her for myself um on, towards the end of your third day in the beginning of the fourth uh, is when the landscape begins to clear uh the dust that surrounds uh, this area begins to settle and you're beginning to see grass flowers and trees um the change is quite uh, um it's very sudden. Within a matter of a few hours, you have gone from a very dry and dusty landscape to the middle of a jungle um, that very much matches the one that the the uh, Jamion store that took you in this area. Uh, you know you are in that jungle, and you should roughly be somewhere to the south uh, of where you showed up. Uh, and everything is just suddenly so much more beautiful and loud and colorful and full of life you're hearing um all sorts of animals and birds and bugs um there is a you you, you remember how excited uh, Talix in particular was to see uh this kind of vegetation trees and flowers that uh, none of you born on either continent had ever seen before and just how healthy um, the vegetation here is and how tall the trees get um, so for a while um, as you guys are hearing these birds singing um, there's um, a few minutes where there is really no recognition you're just hearing birds and it's pleasant but then some of you begin to um, pick up on, on something. With some of you, I mean... 
Well, um, let me finish your description. All of you notice that there is one particular bird who seems to be whistling um, what is recognizably a melody. Uh, you, you notice that uh, it has structure, parts that repeat like a chorus, um, and just a consistent melody throughout. Uh, and then all of you minus Virion uh, would actually remember this melody and remember who's flipping coins? <laughs> Me, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Uh, you would remember the melody and you would remember the specific sound of the bird singing it. Um, a melody that uh, seems to uh, lull you in, and not in any magical sense, but more like it's meant to be, um, to really grab your attention and just invite you to, uh, to visit. And uh, you remember, uh, this is what uh, the glimmer sounds like. Yes. <gasps> oh, it's damn. Time. Uh, as Virion, uh, this is the moment when Virion is taking the lead, and uh, um, you turn back to realize that the rest of your companions have slowed down and are looking around, and their attention seems to have been grabbed by something that uh, you haven't really noticed. You figure it has to be that bird uh, singing. They, they seem to be a lot more excited about it than, <laughs> than you are. Uh huh. I think she would. Once she realized everybody else had stopped, is, is everything all right? Uh, should we be concerned? No concern. It is one we're familiar with. How fortuitous. To Pip's ears, specifically, uh, the melody sung by this bird is all about shiny things, shiny things. I want to find more shiny things. Pip just goes, like, as fast as he can in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Pip takes off. Uh, the others having really no no choice but to see where, where the kid is going. <clears throat> he belongs to the um, temple now. The, <laughs> uh, the general is... He returns to the wild from whence he came. Anyways, <laughs> let's go. All we have to change. <laughs> he's, he's gone. Nothing to Can be done about it. Can leave this granny business all behind us. <laughs> um, Pippi, follow the song. The song that... Um, Starts going into details about what these shiny things are made of. They're made of gemstones and metals. There's jewelry. Uh, there's there's weapons. Uh, and then he begins to describe the surface of the sea and how glimmering it is. Uh, and how beautiful the stars are when they shine bright in the sky. Uh, and eventually, when you reach this... Um, calling the clearing might be a bit of an exaggeration because the, the, the jungle is still quite thin. Thick, uh, but there is enough of a space here between the shrubbery and the various trees where um, a bird almost the size of murder claw uh, is just nestled in, singing, uh, taking a break, apparently. Um, uh, Virion, uh, catching up with the rest of the group, um, what Pip has just reached uh, is... Uh, an enormous bird. It has black and white feathers uh, with blue wings um, and uh, the tail, uh, the feathers of the tail are also just, just very vivid blue color. Um, more, perhaps even more interesting than the uh, the size of the bird is the fact that the bird is carrying equipment. It has this backpack uh, that seems to have been crafted specifically to fit around its body. Um, and uh, the the bird is in the process of uh, uh, tying its... Uh, of, of, of closing the backpack around its body, uh, like it just finished packing things up. 
Um, and the song is interrupted as soon as you guys show up. Um, and there's just a brief moment of silence. And then the bird chirps again louder than before. Uh, no longer into a proper like song. Um, but in what Pip hears as a conversation. Uh, as Glamour says, Hello! Hello! Bye! Trade! And begins to uh, unpack the contents of the backpack and just pour them in front of her uh, on on the, this cloth that she sets out on the ground. Um, Glamour! Hi! Which sounds like bird chirping to everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Glimmer very carefully sets her uh, wares that are up for trade um, in order in front of all of you and uh, uh, then she does some little hops around your group. Um, every hop shakes the ground a little bit uh, and because of the limited space she does end up bumping into pretty much all of you um, with enough strength to nearly uh, knock you uh, knock you down to the ground. Um, she seems particularly full of energy today. Hello, Glimmer. Glimmer is and chirping. Very, very this is Glimmer. Loud. Glimmer likes shiny things and will give you things for shinier things. I I see. This is not. This is nothing. This is not a concern. We are not. Uh, no this merchant a... board. Uh, weird <laughs> Ledarian thing. Uh, first time jarring. Understandable. I get it. Uh, Second time, less so much. Uh, third time, uh, we all love Glimmer. Well, it's a pleasure to meet meet you, Glimmer. Yeah, Glimmer um, doesn't care about you or your uh, okay. formalities. Glimmer okay. wants the shiny things. Okay, that's good to know. Does she understand me? I don't speak bird. Uh, loosely. Okay. <laughs> She understands word shiny and thing. Glimmer and perks prayed. up much like a dog here in the ward walk. No. <laughs> yes. What are your wares? <laughs> All right, Glimmer, spill the beans. <laughs> what do you have? Okay, so in front of you, uh, in order, you see um, a dagger uh, first. One that looks. Oh, she uh... got the boy. <laughs> 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 she looks a little fatter than before. <laughs> Glimmer is out for blood. <laughs> um, <Where's> the book? <laughs> this dagger has. Uh, uh, a hilt that has been wrapped in strips of leather. It looks quite worn, like the leather has gotten uh, pretty dirty and the strips are coming off. Uh, and the, the end of the hilt, uh, uh, like at, at, the, at the base, uh, ends in a little metal circle, like a ring with a hole through it. Um, the, the part that isn't covered by the, the leather, so mainly the... Uh, the, the circle at the end is uh, made of polished metal and it's sparkly. Not the most shiny thing that uh, Glimmer has ever had uh, in her wares. Um, you see some hair. It's tied up in a little in a little knot. Um, it looks not particularly long. Uh, in the in the way it's currently tied up, it might be uh, perhaps four inches long. Uh, but it's blonde, and it looks like it's being treated with just some really good, uh, perhaps some kind of shampoo, um, and it is, it has quite a luster to it. Um, next is a black rock. Um, it looks a little bit like, like glass, it's partially see-through. Um, it's, uh, not cut into any particular shape, it's, it's rock-shaped. Um, but it's, uh, its surface is smooth, and it's quite shiny. Hmm. Um, there is a... There is a, 
a stick. And like for a little bit, uh, the first time you, you guys are looking through the items, you just see this wooden stick with like frayed ends. Um, on, on the second pass, it, uh, I feel like Pontifex would, would be the first person to realize it's not just a stick, it's... Yep. This is a wand, but it looks like it's a wand that is falling apart on one end. Ah, uh, so perhaps broken, but at the base of it, it is reinforced with metal, and that seems to be the shiny part that, might, that has gotten Glimmer's attention. Um, there's uh, two. Hmm. Yeah, there's two masks. Uh, the first one you're seeing is completely white with no facial features, just two slots for the eyes, um, and uh, there's a lot of white hair attached to it. Um, the the mask is so smooth. It's it seems to be made of uh, perhaps marble, some kind of rock. Um, it's shiny enough. Um, there's a pair of boots where the tip is reinforced with metal, and that part is particularly shiny. Otherwise, the rest are just uh, um, they're just leather brown boots. Then there's the second mask. Um, this, <laughs> um, where the first mask had hair, um, like white hair attached to it, this one has, uh, uh yeah, let's go with it. This one has, um, it looks like it was handmade by a child, uh, so it's like a paper mask, and there's bits of various materials that are attached to it, um, and so, like, for example, there is a little rock for, for the nose, and there is some old smudged lipstick where the mouth should be. Uh, it doesn't look particularly nice, uh, but some bits of metal and jewelry that are attached to it are uh, quite shiny. And that's all the items. All right, everyone, stand back. Song and dance, here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna cast attack magic. <laughs> um, right away, it, it's such a like it is one of those spells that you just know inside and out, like the back of your hand. <laughs> um, right away you can tell that all these items are magical except for the hair that is tied in a knot and the black rock. All right. All magic, not that one, and not <laughs> that one, though. I don't suppose it's going to dissuade you at all. Just pointing at Pip. <laughs> what? I could, I could tell us more about individual ones if it uh, equals your fancy. So, so what's the um, procedure here? Uh, if you things. want one of her shiny things, you have to give her a shiny thing and hope that it is better. Uh, in short, polish all of your junk until it is better looking. <laughs> I suppose I could do that. Yeah, buff your garbage. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, uh, give a fair trade or whatever. The giant bird that the viewer you've been told is named the uh, Glimmer. Uh, she watches all of you with this intensity. Um, she lets Pontifex walk around her wares, but like whenever he's reaching down for something, their attention is just so intensely on him, and you can tell that she's um, like nothing escapes her notice. Um, she seems to trust you enough to be around and to be here to trade, but she also seems to just constantly keep an eye on all of your movements. Would you say she's watching us like a hawk? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I would say that. <laughs> Alright, Glimmer. I'm going to level with you. I'm going to clear you out. Uh, and Bonifex is going to pull from his backpack. <laughs> First... MJ's robes covered in sequins. <laughs> oh my gosh. Didn't you yeah. buy them from her? 
Uh, you, bought so. them, you bought did them I? from her, I guess. These were... I, oh, I did. This is like session aware. three. This was session, yeah. yes. This was the very beginning very of the good. campaign. Maybe there's a, a sense of nostalgia, like seeing an old friend once again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, don't worry, that is just the appetizer. <laughs> when you take out the robes. Really? Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I haven't had to do a lot of two-stepping, okay? <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at my rules. Um, Glimmer just seems so excited to be seeing them again. Um, and you can tell that she was very them. attached. <laughs> you, don't want them. You, can, you can see that uh, Glimmer seems to be very attached to these robes that are oh so sparkly. Um, and even though she had traded them away... Uh, you can tell that she that she did kind of miss them. The professor is going to cast prestidigitation to uh, clean them immaculately. <laughs> They're even cleaner than they ever used to be uh, in her and possession. Hand them over completely, like two glimmer just here, like hold it, love it, <laughs> enjoy it. Uh, Glimmer's then... beak is reaching for the rose, but she seems to be holding back. Uh, and like she, she pulls back a little bit, and instead she taps her uh, little footsies on the ground, uh, on the on the blanket where the words are displayed. She wants you to take something. Uh, no, 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 we're not there yet. Uh, I, I, this was like I said, an appetizer. I wish to uh, stimulate your palate for what is to come. Uh, y you might want to brace yourself, Glimmer. <laughs> uh, and the Does Pip uh, translate is... any of this? Um. <laughs> Out of curiosity, yes. okay, oh, with the same, uh, the side. with the same like, <laughs> the, the same <laughs> emphasis. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, the professor has nice reached thing. into his bag. Uh, he's not looking through the bag. He knows exactly what he is reaching for, and he's basically keeping his hand on the object in the bag as a form to build up suspense, as if this bird <laughs> could possibly comprehend it. Uh, and then he is going to slowly reveal. Uh, Cloud Fallen's Black Gemstone. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let me, let me check something eyes. for just a moment. Hmm. Okay, doesn't look like it. Uh, all right, uh, Glimmer's attention is very has very much been uh, gotten. Uh, she, her eyes are wide and round. Her beak can't really smile, but just the way her feet are tapping on the ground, uh, she likes what she's seeing. And then he will uh, he will fold the robes lovingly uh, onto the floor and then rest Cloud Fallen's gem gently in the middle of it as if a pillow. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I want this stick. Uh, and I want the rock. Pip, I got you, no worries. <laughs> and uh, I don't know anyone else. I don't really care about anything except for the stick. I just wanted to blow Gleamer away. I was curious about the boots, actually. Um, I might have something to add to the pile. It's not quite as impressive, but... Oh, don't worry, I can sell it. <laughs> um, so Virian will go <laughs> in her bag. Like <laughs> we'll go in her bag and pull out a bell. A little metal bell. And polish it up a little bit so it's as shiny as she can get it in about 30 seconds. And... Hold it up so it rings a little bit, and then put it on, on the pile that we're building, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the the ringing of the bell um, catches her attention. Uh, this, the... She, <laughs> she loves it! It's her favorite thing that she's seen so far. Uh, the <laughs> Sorry, Pot <Pontifex. laughs> <was> like... <laughs> <laughs> there's a really shiny colorful rose there's a beautiful rock that honestly looks better than the one that uh, the, the glimmer has and then this <laughs> bell comes out with like a little bit of rust on it that the just quickly cleans away um 
and uh, as she is cleaning it, 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 uh, it goes ding 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 a couple of times, and uh, that suddenly it's all a glimmer once. Uh, she begins to little hops around Viren, and it's while Viren is trying to work, uh, and, <laughs> and and she like even like hits her with like like she headbutts her back a couple of times, like she's very impatient to get her wings on it. Of course, of course. Um, I'll just take the the boots, and you can have this wonderful bell. Uh, you reach for for the boots, so like pointing at them, um, and uh, Glimmer like uses one foot to um, pick them up, like in her claws, very yeah. gently, uh, lifts them up for you, and hands them over, yeah. and oh, snatches uh, the bell in return. I was actually, before she snatches the bell, just really quickly, uh, we're gonna tie just a little bit of string around it to make it a little bit easier for her to hold and jingle. Okay. And then um, give it to yeah. her. Anyway, you should, should take it from the string then. Yes. You have a pair of boots? Nice. So, uh, anyone else have interest in anything, or is it just a stick in the rock? Oh, Pip is Pip is all over looking looking at things close up, but hasn't said anything just yet. They have, um... <laughs> Nor do I expect him to. Maybe we're not gonna check from Pip. <laughs> sure. Uh, I'm not. Man, I don't know if Pip's made one of these before. <laughs> <It's> intelligence. <laughs> Isn't Pip more intelligent now that he has met the... He He is. Not much more. Okay. <laughs> Tangibly more intelligent. Um, nothing to say there. Cool. <laughs> Did uh, I put no. a list on? Yeah, I did. Oh, no. If you if you want another description of any items, so I gotcha. Can you tell me about the paper mask again? The paper it looks mask. Looks like a kid made it. Yeah, the the in terms of quality, um, it it's the kind of that's been folded together, kind of like an origami, uh, but then to the paper, there have been a lot of things that have been attached. To to them, uh, it's an assortment of items and some make sense in their position like you can tell, okay, they were trying to make an ear here, and they were trying to make an eyebrow here, uh, but there's a lot of just, a lot of it doesn't quite have um, a whole like lot of sense art. yeah I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's a you pasta know I like heart. my macaroni art <laughs> is um, that Austin or Pip? <laughs> <laughs> yes. it's more of an inside joke yeah <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's just strange and macabre enough that Pip is very interested in it. Uh, and Pip will first take off uh, the brass cabinet knob out of his hair. Um, and he's going to spit on it and <laughs> sort of rub it up against his shirt. And hold it up in the light and say, This is from my home. It's really shiny. What did you say it is? It's a brass cabinet knob. A cabinet knob? It's been in Pip's hair this whole time. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I looked over at my screen with my Twitch layout to, to look at Pip's model for a moment. I was <laughs> almost <laughs> expecting to see a cabinet a knob. Cabinet knob. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. The dice say that Glimmer... Glimmer is considering it. She doesn't seem as excited about the knob as any of the other items that have been presented to her. Um, in your case, as she can actually communicate with you. Um, she wants to know what you want to trade it for. And when you show your interest in that particular mask, uh, she seems to think about it, and then she says, More! 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 Mm. And she begins to hop. Would you give me two things if I also included this star boba? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
flashlight, you're gonna give Glamour your constellation. She yeah, doesn't know what it to. is, but the moment uh, you, you present it to her... Yeah. Okay. Um, she passes out in excitement. She passes out in excitement, <laughs> yes. And there is a little bit of, like, a, to your ears, it's a gasp. Everyone else just hears this whistle, um, which, like, it could be interpreted as, like, her liking what she's seeing, but, like, to Pip's ears in particular, this is the best thing she has ever seen in her life. <laughs> um, and she just nods very excitedly, um, saying, two, two, two! And she's uh, hopping all over the place and uh, uh, willing to let you pick two items in exchange for the knob and the boba. I don't know, this thing's really special to me. It's got a lot of trade? emotional attachment. Trade, 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 trade. Or two. Hmm. Pip is a little hustler. <laughs> <laughs> She's tilting her head to the left and <laughs> the right. That the bump through intelligence was a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly understands uh, uh, the bar turning system and capitalism what if what if i took <laughs> two and God damn it. three strands of that hair just three strands you barely even notice it's gone <laughs> mm. okay trade Trade! Trade! Pit trade, hands trade, over trade. the star boba. Um, and he's going to take... The, oh, yes. you, you hold it up, uh, like, you know, in your hand. Uh, and the way the glimmer grabs it, the entire thing goes in her, in her beak. Uh, and there's a few seconds oh. where you're like, Oh god, I just no, like, made her swallow a marble. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you hear, it, you hear it rattling in her beak as she's moving around and turning around and deciding where to put it. And eventually she... Um, as she... <laughs> <laughs> Did you type this before I said it? I was in the middle of typing it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, it's a boba. You guys have been calling it a boba, not me. Um, but yeah, she, as she turns around, you hear it rattling in her beak, and eventually she puts, like, half of her face into her backpack, uh, and you hear the rattling um, softening and something falling into the backpack. So it has not been swallowed. Uh, she comes back to take the, door, the, the cabinet knob, um, which goes into a different pocket of the backpack, and uh, she is going to pluck the strands of hair from uh, uh, from the mask with the hair. That's the non-magical one, right? Uh, both uh, masks are magical. Oh, they are? Oh. Mm -hmm. It's mm. just the rock and the... Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's two kinds of hair. Sorry, I, I wasn't thinking. Did you want the hair from the blonde... Uh, Part of hair. Oh, there's, I'm sorry. There's two kinds of hair. Yeah, uh, there's, there's like, one of the masks the mask has white, white hair. hair glued oh, on. oh, and then oh. there's like a blonde wig. Yeah, Pip wanted the the hair from the the like the blonde hair. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then yeah, she will pluck some strands from that, and you end up. Uh, you're now the proud owner of some of the most blonde golden hair you've ever seen. Right. Uh, it's Pip like we'll have a use for that later. It's like. I believe you. It's treading that line like it, it almost feels like it uh, can't be a natural color, but it's not quite to the point of being uncanny. Gotcha. Three strands of very blonde hair. <laughs> For you, Slater. How blonde is it? <laughs> very blonde. Very blonde. Um, And then Pip will point at the paper mask. And can you tell me more about that dagger again? Mm-hmm. Uh, the dagger uh, is a little old, a little dirty. The leather strips around the hilt uh, are uh, kind of like almost sticky when you try to touch them. Um, they're mm -hmm. and they're, they're like beginning to come off. Uh, 
Uh, the end of the dagger has uh, the the pommel is round. It's shaped like a ring, so you can see through it. Um, the, the blade is just a sender steel. Sure, we'll take that too. Another child with a knife. Yeah. <laughs> and with the As I should gentlest be. grip, she hands over the paper mask without uh, putting like the slightest dent in it. Uh, and it you take the dagger on. too? Yes. And hold you put the, the mask knife. on? Yes. Roll a d5. Oh, whoa. Ah, a d5! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can have do that. a d5 here. Roll a d6. <laughs> Okay. Forgot we're not on roll 20 for a second. <laughs> Two. I die instantly <laughs> and irrevocably. Um, everything that is on the mask begins to sort of rearrange itself. Uh, and the mask itself folds up and outward into a slightly different shape. Um, this happens in like really quickly, in a matter of seconds. Uh, and the mask now looks a lot more like uh, a proper mask. This one, um, it, it has taken on this very big hooked nose and this thin mouth that is um, uh, twisted in a, in a grin, uh, a bit of a weak chin. Um, definitely uh, an adult face, uh, masculine too. just holds up the dagger with this this mask on and says <laughs> how do I look <laughs> if, if he could to, to, to glimmer not to anyone else of course yeah. squawk um. <laughs> waving a knife around aggressively um, oh, no, it looks like a bad deal glimmer gives like just the briefest uh, of remarks uh, um, just a very small compliment and her attention is back to her backpack oh, she's messing with things inside of it and you hear the um, the sound of the marble rolling around. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's distracted. Pip's just gonna run around waving his knife in the air. <laughs> oh my god! Pip <laughs> looks have? like a classic, just villain. <laughs> ZNL. <laughs> Uh, what was Pontifex uh, trying to get? The, the rock and the... Uh, oh, the wand. Uh, the rock Anything and else? the wand. Uh, and now that well, everyone else... He was trying to, to get other people's stuff in there, but everyone else seemed to get their own stuff. So uh, easy enough for him. Uh, he is just going to uh, going to pluck the uh, the black gemstone off of the robes. Uh, and is just going to present the robes for the stick and the rock. Mm-hmm. Uh... It actually takes a moment to get uh, to get Glimmer to return yeah. to you. Uh, but once she's back and you're still hearing the rattling of the marble in her beak, uh, it, <laughs> it, she seems to have decided that that's the place where it should be. Uh, so she no longer whistles, so she just silently uses her, uh, her claws to grab the things you want and grab the things that you're offering, and uh, um, the trade goes off. You're proud new owner of a rock in exchange for a different rock and of a wand. Uh, oh, he's not. Uh, he's not offering the cloud fallen gem. Just the sequin robes. Oh, just the robes. Yeah, he was throwing the gem on there, and uh, he was planning to try to basically get everyone's haul. Uh, but then everyone managed to barter for the things they were interested in, anyways. So, um, uh, he would much rather okay, keep me... his cloud fallen rock than just a rock. Let, let me see if uh, because uh, she she will not easily give up two items for one. Um. Can it be a persuasion check if you're not speaking to her? <laughs> Let's make it an animal handling check. I'm weirdly enough just as good. You're just as good? Yeah, because my wisdom makes up for my lack of proficiency. God, I'm so sick at this game. <laughs> 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 So you just did one of those like trading sequences in video games uh, where you get one item and you trade it for a different one, which you trade it for a different one, except you did it 
with the same character as you give Glimmer back an item you have gotten from her and you successfully get two out of it. <laughs> Albeit cleaner than uh, before. Yeah. You bought it off of her so you could clean it and return it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you he can will, get uh, the rock upon and the getting his new stuff, He will uh, immediately just, here you go, and just toss the black worthless rock to him. Uh, to him. <laughs> Who's Keep the villain like, and yeah. now has a black rock in his other <laughs> hand. <laughs> to everybody, he's just like doing like a cackling motion, but there's just a <laughs> tiny little Silent. bit of a wheeze coming out. Various Show me your birds for their feathers boot. I will pluck. Yeah. Oh, Glimmer seems worried at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, after that trade's done, um, I'm going to... Uh, take the time to uh, cast Identify on... Uh, is it a single item or is it a pile? I think it's Sorry? a single on one what? object. Uh, uh, he's oh, going to yeah. identify his uh, his stick. The wand. I'm going to re reword that. He's identifying the wand. <laughs> okay. Um, ten minutes later, you are in your hands, you're holding a multi-purpose wand. Uh, I'll let it to your sheet later. It has seven charges. It regains the 26 plus one at dawn. Uh, it can cast any of the following cantrips for one charge. Create bonfire, dancing lights, mending, prestidigitation. You can also spend two charges for the alarm spell. Sick. Uh, turns out it's not broken at all. The different bits of wood that were coming out from one end... Uh, each one of them does a different thing. Somebody essentially carved out the cores of a bunch of different ones and stuck them together. And you're not quite sure how, but it works. It's like uh, this is specifically Plurn and Magic. So you figure that Glimmer got this from uh, uh, an, an outsider like you. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, I am remembering. MJ's rule. Um, anyone else interested in anything else? Because Glimmer is beginning to pack her things. Um, what she can seems... left? Just the blonde wig, the white hair, blank mask, and that's it? Uh, yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Like I want wig. <laughs> Joey just uh, posted a picture of one of those pens that has like multiple colors. One of those really thick ones. She said it's one of these, but a wand. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Hey, there's... Hey, Pip looks purely content. I don't want to interrupt him. Uh, yeah! Uh, Period. Do you want to know what those things do? Uh, yeah, before I put them on... Just in case. Well, they could just start making you walk, you know? You could, but I would prefer if you didn't. No, I mean, if you put the boots oh. on, they could just start making you walk. Oh, yeah. Like you, maybe you can't... The curses be doing weird stuff. Yeah, I don't... I'd rather not if we don't... Is Pip okay? I don't know. He's been running around with it screaming for literally over 10 Pipio. minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> I figured I'll give but... him another 10 minutes to uh, settle down. We hey, still sleep really well mm -hmm. tonight. Uh, would you do me a favor and mm. uh, enroll Roll a deception safe. check? Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> They're gonna make a constitution check to see if the kid tires himself out. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the zombies. Natural one. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Roll with advantage. Oh, okay. She wants you to succeed. <laughs> Please do it again. Yeah. Three. Okay. That's it. <laughs> That's my boy. Um, you're, you're in luck. It was DC Trying six. to get into character. It's not quite coming to you, but you're having fun. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Professor's going to ritual cast identify on the boots. The booties. <laughs> the boots. Uh, okay. 
10 minutes later. Um, <laughs> since uh, since Glimmer is <laughs> leaving, if anyone noises. wanted to do something like this, has to be the time. Yeah, I want to yeah. go find a snake to kill. <laughs> oh my oh. god. <laughs> um, Tekka... He just dashes into the woods. I promise I'm not making Austin do this. <laughs> what is it, Sid? It's a cursed knife. Tekka would shout for Pip to come back over to Glimmer, actually. <laughs> Pip, you have to play where I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what you have. Come on, on your own, it's dangerous. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Tekka has been polishing their toy catapult that he got from the toy store in Arca uh, with the sun ball. Uh, mm -hmm. And then he's going to offer that to Glimmer, but with a request. Um to offer this to someone she sees that would enjoy it. So that is what he's asking Pip to say to Glimmer. Pip will translate. Hi. Glimmer seems very perplexed at the concept of a trade of this nature. Um, and through Pip, she double checks, triple checks if you don't want one of her items instead. Mm, Tekka will take one look over at Brooke. See if there's any interest there. If not, then no. Nothing's particular. Um, and yeah, she, she eventually works past uh, the perplexity. Um, she she keeps saying trade for a little while, Pip, and like that's all you can translate just the word to trade over and over. Um, uh, that's how her confusion comes through. But eventually, she seems to like be looking for a different word, and uh, her eyes brighten up a little bit. She looks uh, to the side away from you, which for her that's that's how she looks directly at you uh, with just one eye, and she says delivery. Uh, yeah, if Pip translates that, then Tekka will definitely mm -hmm. nod at that. Deliver! Deliver! And she's uh, uh, the the golden boba. Wait, what color was uh, Pip's? Uh, red. Red. The red boba nearly falls out of her beak. Um, oh. uh, but she catches it in midair, like catching a treat. Um, and uh, she extends her, her uh, claws to um, accept the catapult. It, the toy catapult. All right. That'll be all. Pip and uh, go run off and look well, for a first, snake, I guess. Get Pip will reach in his own backpack and say, Oh, take that. Nope, he can't say it. Uh, <laughs> Pip will, will just <laughs> hand a paddle ball to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then run off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hiya! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then we're going to end this session on hey. Pip's uh, um... boots. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah the boots. <laughs> um, what what check am I gonna do? Survival. Uh, Pip, you roll survival while I uh, explain what the boots do. Which is scroll, scroll, scroll. Where are they? Okay, the vigilant boots. Uh, <laughs> while wearing <laughs> these. <laughs> you just do shield the boot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm cackling at the natural one. Uh, well, yeah. wearing these boots once per day, <clears throat> you can add one DA to your initiative rolls. Nice. Oh, I know those boots. I know those boots. I'm a fan. Hey, like there are boots. no snakes in this entire jungle. You don't want to use any of your three <laughs> inspirations? <laughs> uh, yeah, didn't I say I would only give you an inspiration if you gave away one of them? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's a three. There's my boy. He <laughs> lives. Inspiration. Uh, what's your total? What's your bonus? Uh, it's plus five, Nine. so it's eight. Eight. Wait, oh, I three. can do math. <laughs> Snake, you end up finding after looking really hard for it. It's not even ah, venomous. 
It just sighs. You are not a worthy foe. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the snake released harmlessly. Uh, and uh, Glimmer taking off. Uh, significantly lighter than she was before. Uh, and uh, with you can hear the faraway sound of both the the boba in her beak and also especially the bell that is just dangling from her backpack um, as she uh, flies away. That's where we'll end the session. Nice. Let's go. Goodbye, Glimmer. I like that. Last time you gave something dangerous to Glimmer, she gave it to someone who used it against you, and Tekka's like, let's give it also to a catapult. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm sure that was the last this. time that I got a wand off of a, a mysterious traveling vendor. Nothing bad happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, the difference is this time it's not a mysterious fan traveler. We know Glimmer. We, can <laughs> we know this one. This is our I feel dealer. like we trusted the fluffy dog person more than the weird bird. Yeah, um, we were wrong. We learned our lesson. How does the telepathy? Wrong. Never trust anyone. <laughs> How does the telepathy with the squeak and the pip work? Can it can it be in? Can it communicate my... regardless of distance or? Yes, is there because of my invocation, it's as long mm -hmm. as we're on the same plane of existence. Sick. You can okay. communicate telepathically with your familiar and perceive through your familiar senses as long as you are on the same plane of existence. Okay, I'll oh, just you let just, you know like, that. See through him too. Yeah. Yeah, you you've been keeping yeah, up I... with his uh, journey and. Uh, Squeak has been taking it uh, easier than he would have liked, uh, taking a lot of breaks, but uh, uh, he has been traveling in the correct direction, and uh, this will be right around the time when you'd see that uh, Squeak has also left the Dustfall area and has actually found a river. Gotcha. Yay! Progress. Progress! How's next week uh, looking for everybody? Should be good. Yep. Should be good, might be a little bit late. I, it's okay. I'm going to be visiting my family, but I am trying to figure out how to either bring my laptop or, if all else fails, I'm bringing my old computer with me so I can take a few hours off and play. Okay. Um, then update us. Let us know. Will do. Um, yeah, what it, what it yeah, looks like, like. Yeah, the yeah. biggest thing is I'm going to have to use my phone as a tether, but that should be fine. <laughs> Okay. Right, I should then. be okay. I need to make sure that I don't have any like Fourth of July plans because that's the weekend. But I think I'm okay. Oh yeah, the fourth is on Tuesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much for being here today, and I'm going to end the stream right here. See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.